out. Uh, you guys know it's been a, uh, a very, very busy last 24 hours with uh, Jerry Lawler and uh, what happened on Monday Night Raw last night. We, uh, we've got some, you know, news that we haven't reported yet that we're going to get into on that and uh, what the latest is, what the latest is with, uh, with him. We're going to run down Monday Night Raw and we had TNA No Surrender on Sunday night as well. So, with that being said, Matt Boone, what's going on, my man? Hey now, hey now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to start here. I want to be energetic and uh, and fun and everything, but I mean, right off the bat, today's September 11th. That should be on everybody's mind, at least Americans. Um, we got the lawless thing last night. It's uh, it's a somber day to say the least, but we're here. A lot of people are tuned in right now, and we've got a lot to talk about between, like you said, the TNA pay-per-view last Sunday. We got Night of Champions this Sunday. Um, the crazy Raw last night, which was just surreal and, and, and bizarre and eerie in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, a lot to talk Goldberg, I mean, shit, we've got a lot to talk about, and uh, two hours to do it. Maybe more if we need to, but um, I don't know. Where do you want to start? It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's been crazy, man. I mean, you never, you know, when you go, you, you never know. Like last night I pulled, uh, I pulled an all-nighter. You know what I mean? I was up all night long because I didn't know what was going to happen. And, uh, actually I can't say I pulled an all-nighter. I went to, uh, I went to bed last night at about 4.45. Just, I mean, that's when I laid down, dude. And when, and when did you get up? I was up at 7.30 this morning. Yeah. That's an all-nighter, dude. Jeez. Anybody else, that's an all-nighter. Yeah, no, pretty much, man. I went, uh, well, I laid down at about 4.45 last night and then uh, passed out about 5.15, I think it was. And, uh, you know, I set the alarm for 7 o'clock and uh, I, I overslept a little bit, but I got up at 7.30, 7.45 and uh, got right back on here. And, you know, I mean, there were updates this morning and you knew that, you know, you knew videos and things like that were going to come out today. And you know all this latest news. We've got uh, Stacy Stacy Carter, um, you know, formerly known as the Cat in in WWE. She uh, used to date Jerry Lawler in uh, in real life, and she's been giving updates on her Facebook and, and Twitter page, <coughs> which has been helpful to us. And we know that um, Brian Christopher, the uh, the real life son of Jerry Lawler. And his current Grandmaster Sexy, Grandmaster Sexy, and uh, his current girlfriend, who, God bless Jerry, man, he's got a 22-year-old girlfriend. You know what I mean? And he always, <laughs> man, he's always been a 60-year-old man. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Listen, when I'm 60 years old, hell yeah, I'm gonna want a 20-year-old girlfriend. You know what I'm saying, dude? Hey, listen, as long as she's over the age of 18, and uh, and you know she's down with it, why not, man? You know? Hey, man, I'm. I'm pushing 30. I would love a 20 year old girlfriend. Who wouldn't? Everybody would. Exactly, man. Exactly. You can probably hear it in my voice, dude. I am I am beat, man. But, the, I mean, the show must go on. I, I said it on my Facebook page earlier. The show must go on. We got a big one tonight, man. Well, you that, know? That, that's another topic we really need to talk about. I haven't, I haven't heard too much talk about it yet, I don't think at least. But the, the subject of whether or not Raw should have continued last night uh, when that happened. Well, you know there, I mean? we can get into that too. There were there were early reports that they were going to uh, that they were going to cancel the show, and those uh, actually didn't turn out to be true. We put a uh, correction up on the website earlier. There, there was so much stuff going on last night. You know, as soon as it happened, with I mean, people backstage. I had texted. I texted somebody backstage, and they sent me a text back. And at about 10:55, about 10 minutes, where you had uh, John Cena and CM Punk out in the ring, the WWE officials were rounding up their talents backstage and saying, you know, we're gonna have a big meeting post Raw. Anything, the dark match that they had planned, there was the dark match, and uh, the whole Pat Patterson segment that they were gonna do. They rounded. They started rounding everybody up. Well, CM Punk and John Cena were in the ring doing that promo. Bret Hart too, and uh, you know, as soon as the uh, the show went off the air, they rounded everybody up and took them into a meeting room and basically tried to calm everybody down. Man, I mean, the, there were people crying backstage. There were people. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, reports I had were that there was a lot of people crying. A lot of people were together praying. Those that are uh, religious, believe in God, and um, yeah, it really. I can just say from my perspective, I, I wasn't watching Raw at the time, but you had called me. 
and said, hey, man, I think something really serious is going on here. Uh, you know, Jerry Lawler, I think, just, just had a heart attack. I mean, he, he might be dying right now, you know. And uh, my initial reaction, not knowing anything, you got to understand where I'm coming from, was, well, that's got to be at work. And you're like, now, dude, I'm telling you, this is serious. And I'm like, well, he's been the focus of TV the last few weeks with CM Punk, and, and half the thing was about him being an old man. I said, did he wrestle tonight? And you said, yeah, he just wrestled like 30 minutes an hour ago or something. And I'm like, it's, it's an angle, dude. And you're like, dude, I'm, you're like, I'm telling you, this is the real deal. So at that point, I turned my uh, stream on, and it wasn't the Rob stream. It was uh, one of the public ones, but it actually worked pretty good. I was able to, I, I watched the rest of the show from that point on, and, and you could tell immediately. You, I mean, you were dead right, obviously. It was clearly something was going on. I didn't know how serious it was, but it felt a lot like the Owen Hart uh, what was it over the edge pay-per-view when, uh, but uh, it felt like that like like god this is just it's eerie it feels weird it's just it's uncomfortable it's, it's just it's bad you know you could just feel something was bad yeah. and I was waiting I just kept waiting and I was so hoping I was wrong and thank god I was I was just waiting for Michael Cole to come on and make that announcement that you know we had lost Jerry but thank god that didn't happen uh, we can get into this condition in a minute. It's not like it's great news, you know. It's definitely not good news, but it's it could be. It, it, it didn't get to the point where it was like, oh shit, you know. I can't believe this. You know, it, it, it could have been a lot worse. So thank God that it didn't go to where oh, I'm hope. I'm assuming everybody was thinking it was going to go. Like, holy shit, man! Did he just die on TV? You know. Well, That's no, and thing. and like you said, I mean, what happened, guys, is Boone, Boone, you know, he doesn't have a TV where he is right now, and uh, basically relies on on streams, and the streams don't work all that well for him. So I had called him up as soon as it, I I put a, uh, a post on Facebook, and I said, look at the audience. I said the whole crowd is looking over towards the announce booth, and and I put that up. I said something's wrong wrong with uh, Jerry Lawler, and Lawler went silent. You know, he wasn't saying it. It was all Michael Cole. So I said something something is seriously wrong right now. So I called. Called you up and I said, Boone, something. I'm telling you, bro, something is wrong. And you said, No, dude, get out of. I said, Dude, listen, I can tell, man. Normally, I can tell, man. I mean, there's times where you don't know. You know what I mean? You're kind of iffy. This was you knew. You knew that as soon as Jerry Lawler stopped talking out of nowhere. I mean, they were commentating a, a match between. I think it was the primetime players and and somebody else, man. Ugh. Primetime players and uh, and somebody else and. You know, you, you could you could just tell that something was wrong. And I, dude, it took me about 20 minutes to convince Boone. I said, "Here's a stream. Get on this stream." <laughs> no, dude, no, it's not real. I said, "Bro, I'm telling you." And then eventually, you know, you came around and and you knew that it was real. But um, basically, I mean, listen, what we're gonna do? I have the uh, the Michael Cole. The I think he came on three times in that final hour because it happened yeah, it in the three final times. three times. I have uh, all three of those segments right where Michael Cole comes on and and basically you know gives updates. So we're gonna put we'll do the plugs here. We'll get those out of the way and then we'll get into Jerry Law. I mean we gotta do TNA No Surrender right from from Sunday night. I know you uh, you had to do play by play so you know what's going on there right? Yeah. yeah. All right, and then we got Monday Night Raw. We'll kind of we'll skip through Monday Night Raw. We're not gonna do every segment, and then that'll give us time to do the uh, the Jerry Lawler stuff um, and, and talk about that. Well, like I said, guys, we've got uh, some exclusive news. The latest, what's the deal on his condition? Uh, the whole brain damage thing comes into play. Um, is, is he ever gonna return to the announce booth? Is he ever gonna return to the ring? Uh, we're gonna get into that, and uh, it doesn't look good, man. Uh, I'll tell you that right now. It's just it doesn't look good as far as at the least brain the brain damage thing. It's, it's scares me, man. Like, I really pray that he, <laughs> when he knock on wood when he, when he recovers, that he doesn't suffer from, I mean, if it's brain, hopefully it's not too much brain damage to where he can't function on, like, a normal life. Like, that that would just be tragic. Uh, we don't know if it's, how tragic it is yet. We know what happened was a tragic thing, but we don't know the results of what happened. Well, like, well, when, and he, when, he, when, he, when he's out of the hospital, knock on wood, he gets out. Uh, you know, when all that's done, ha what's his condition? You know what I mean? Well, I'm really nervous to find out. And listen, he's condition. he's not out of the woods yet, guys. A lot of times that's when, when, when yeah. people when people suffer heart attacks and, and strokes, I mean, it's kind of a bad comparison. But, I mean, let's say you get an earthquake in the United States, and then you get aftershocks after the earthquake. You know what I'm saying? When people have a heart attack or you have a stroke, uh, you can survive that initial stroke or heart attack 
attack, but then there are times where you have a second and third and fourth heart attack while you're in the hospital. So he's, I mean, he's not out of the woods by any means yet. And not only that, but they've still got him connected to a, uh, a ventilator, which is not good. And, and I, heard it, they were, I heard they were taking him off of the ventilator. Didn't Stacey Carter just put an update up saying that they're taking him off of it? They're going to take him off ASAP. I don't think they've done it yet. Uh, but I know yeah. they're, they're going to, I mean, you, you don't want to, you're going to... you got to remember, he lost so much oxygen to the brain while all that was going on that, you know, even if he you know, survives, God hoping he does, but we don't know if if he's gonna be you know, if he's gonna have you know, like you said, brain damage and that's right. that's still a tragic thing, you know, he's yeah. if he has brain damage he's, he ain't gonna be announced anymore. He's not gonna be wrestling obviously anymore and <laughs> his quality of life could be diminished, you know, it's just it's very sad. All right. Let me, uh, I'll tell you what, man. Let's get the plugs out of the way, and then uh, we'll get into, we'll do TNA No Surrender, like I said, and then we'll do Monday Night Raw, and then that'll leave us some time for Jerry Lawler. Like I said, we're going to skip through No Surrender. We're going to skip through Raw. The important topic tonight, obviously, is Jerry Lawler. Everybody wants to know what's going on uh, with that whole situation. So, like I said, we've got exclusive news we're going to give you. We've also got Saturday Morning Slam, Superstars, and SmackDown spoilers that we're going to be giving you here in just a little bit here on the website so or here on the radio show so stay tuned we've got a live chat room on actually you know what first and foremost you brought it up at the, uh, at the top of the show bro um today is 9 11 september 11th um everybody knows september 11th was the uh you know they you flew believe the, uh, it's been 11 years it's so crazy man yeah it's uh it's just it's not a good day i mean you brought it up it's a somber day you know with uh with jerry lawler in in september 11th uh 11 years man i still remember where i was and, to and, this uh, day. and michael Clay duncan he died too a big wrestling and mma uh enthusiast you know and the rock friend and... the green mile one of the greatest movies of all time in my yeah. opinion in my opinion but um yeah man just Agreed. you know mark henry was the uh was one of the pallbearers for uh for his funeral did you see that was he? Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, I mean, listen, I know there's a lot of you guys in, you know, that listen from all over the world, and some of you guys in New York City, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, there were over 3,000 lives lost on that day 11 years ago, on this day 11 years ago. So, uh, I know some of you guys probably knew people that, uh, that perished in, uh, on, on 9-11, and uh, you know that it's it's just every single year. Oh, I still the timeline though, to put the timeline into perspective. Eleven years, if you remember, we were always work associates uh, for what I think from like ninety eight, ninety nine on. But right after nine eleven was when I moved to New York and moved in with you, and that's when we became real life friends. So it's been that long. Like now, that's, you know what? That's a now, long time. now that I think back, eleven years ago, and this uh, we're always wondering how long I've been doing this, and. 11 years ago, I was working at Home Depot, all right, as a part-time job. I had this job, and I would come home from Home Depot, and this is really where this job started taking off, man, where I got the yeah. dot-coms and everything else. Me too. I was, working at, uh, I was working at Arby's and doing this. We both had part-time jobs. Right. I was working the part-time part -time job at Home Depot, and then this job really took off, and I quit Home Depot. Actually, I got fired from Home Depot. I was, was going to uh, say, you got fired, man. <laughs> I was, uh, well, you know what happened, dude? I was driving a fork lift, dude. I worked in the lumber yeah, yeah. department, and uh, they, you know how if you ever go past a uh, Home Depot, they've got the big orange doors in the lumber department, and uh, I was taking the lumber off a truck. I had a big thing of fucking lumber on the forklift, and it was raining outside, and I came back in, and I had the lumber in the air, and when I came back in, I fucking hit the garage door. Somebody lowered the garage door well, I was bringing the lumber oh, in, and I had no idea when I was driving the forklift, so the whole door came down and collapsed over the top of the forklift. I had to crawl out of this fucking thing, dude, and then they took me in and they fired me. So I said, all right. All right well, they fired you, so what did they say? I mean, if it was Vince McMahon, how would it sound? Uh, yeah, I can't, you hear my voice, bro. You hear my voice. Not good. Oh, uh, come on. Oh, uh, come on, dude. Come on. You can't put me on the spot. It's got to be out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be out of nowhere, dude. The whole, you're... It's not, I, it, I gotta, it's, oh, it's, it's gotta, no, 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 it. it's, it's gotta come out of nowhere though, I can't, you can't put me on the spot, you've done that, you do that all, you put me on the <laughs> spot, motherfucker, <laughs> so anyway, I got fired, but anyways, I was working, uh, I was working at Home Depot, uh, September 11th, and everybody went back in the break room, and, uh, you know, and, and then I went back out, and I thought it was over, and then somebody come running back out and said, hey, another plane just hit the other freaking world train. I said, oh, my God, dude. And then you had the plane that hit the uh, Pentagon and then the plane that went down in the field in uh, in Pennsylvania, dude. I mean, it was yeah. unbelievable. My, uh, 
my uncle and my godfather, his name's Tommy, he worked at the Pentagon. He didn't go to work that day. Thank wow. God. Otherwise, you know, who wow. knows? But um, I remember I was, I think at that point I was done with all this. <laughs> I was just doing the internet thing. My, my internet career took off about a year before yours as far as really getting successful. Right, right. And at the time I was working, and um, I remember Larry Goldberg, guy that owned Boxing.com, and uh, he, uh, he's really into boxing. He's a pretty big player. Right. His dad owns a chain of hotels in New Jersey, but he was telling me like, "Yo, the uh, the Twin Towers just got hit," and I was so naive to, and I still remain this day, as far as geography and, and things like that. Like, you're always good with knowing where venues are and where this is and this and that. I, I'm not good with that stuff. And he said, "You know, the Twin Towers just got hit," and I didn't even know what the hell the Twin Towers was. You know, I, I was that oblivious. Right. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was. And he's like, "Dude, this is historical. What's going on? You got to turn the TV on." This was just when the first plane hit. Right. And I remember, well, as everything was unfolding, I remember when the fucking towers went down, it was just like the most sickening feeling I ever had in my stomach in my life. I mean, it, it, comparable to like, we're talking about heart attacks, when my stepdad, I was living with you at the time, when I found out he had a heart attack and died, mm -hmm. I, that, 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 remember when our buddy Rob died, you get that sick feeling in your stomach and, and that feeling in your head of disbelief, this isn't happening. There was a lot of that feeling going on during 9-11, and, and every year, when September 11th hits, it's like you, you get taken back to, to 2001, September. It just it just reminds you of how disgusting and and and, and tragic that well, whole thing was. It was just surreal. I mean, I mean, here's a story from from just somebody in our chat room. You know, Brian Clark says I was outside sorting some boxes and heard a roaring plane overhead. I looked up and it was a low plane going fast, and it went straight into the North Tower. That's somebody that lives right in New York City that you know, is listening to the show, Brian Clark in the chat room. So everybody's got a, a different story, you know, regarding where you were and what you were doing. But man, oh man, what a uh, what a sad day, man. You know what I mean? What a sad day. And then the whole yeah, Jerry man. Jerry Lawler thing last night. So, um, so respects to uh, anybody that, you know, uh, knew somebody or, you know, was involved in the 9-11 uh, tax. Never forget that day. Um, how how was the weekend, bro? Did you have a, uh, I know we had there was the uh, Chad Dawson and Andre Ward fight uh, Saturday night. Really good did fight. You get to see that? Yeah, I did, man. Dawson tapped out, dude. He quit, and I think it was the seventh or eighth round. He uh, he quit, man. He, he said, I don't want to fight. Referee asked him if he wanted to fight anymore, and he said, No, nope, I'm done. So that yeah, was we that. Both, we both picked Ward last week, and uh, he's still undefeated. He got the TKO victory. I think it was the ninth or tenth round, actually. But um, it was, I didn't he, get to see the fight. Was the fight like entertain? Was it competitive? Was it one sided? No, like, Ward, Ward, go? Ward killed him, bro. Ward was just doing wow. him, dude. Yeah, the whole fight, man. Dawson. and Dawson's the real deal. He's no joke, you know. Yeah. Ward's gonna be a superstar within the next two years, I would say, top. Right. You heard right. it here, folks. No doubt. Um, what else? Oh, and then one other one other news bit, right? Remember a couple months ago we came on here, dude, and uh, that poor woman, man, she was uh, a bus monitor and, and she got bullied, you know, and, and they did yeah, this. Yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. You know, the kids were bullying her and they, you know, this guy from Canada started a, uh, a fundraising campaign for, uh, for this lady. Well, today, her name was Karen Klein. Today they uh, held a ceremony for her and the guy from Canada... Got uh, came and presented a check for seven hundred thousand dollars, and there were a lot of people that wow. were saying, you know, what is this guy up to? Is he trying to scam this lady and and this that? You got to give the guy props, man. He delivered on his word. He gave her a check for seven hundred thousand dollars, and uh, when she was asked what she was going to do with it, she said she wanted to buy a new carpet. And also, and, and this was what a lot of people were saying she should do, um, she's going to launch a foundation for anti-bullying, which uh, she's going to use a lot of that money to, um, it, I mean, it's a real, real feel-good story. I mean, after the 9-11 and the Jerry Lawler stuff, man, I figured I'd bring that up because... No, it's got that, it's yeah. got that tragic tie-in, though, because of what how it happened. But um, to yeah. lighten the mood, you're talking about the weekend, uh, I'll just say this, how about those bills? <laughs> Suck a dick, bro. Yeah. Suck a dick. Get out of here, dude. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I don't know what happened, bro. I mean, it's. I'm telling you, it's Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick sucks, bro. I, we need him out of there, dude. He's garbage. He's garbage. The rest of the team's fine. The defense looked good. I'll give him that. And I know they scored 48 points on us. I know they put up 48 yeah, points. Blah, blah, blah. The the, I'm <laughs> telling you, the defense looked decent, dude. It's Fitzpatrick that was throwing picks and this, that, and the other thing. Give C.J. Spiller the ball, and, and you know what? He 
Sharp in the chat room. Fred, Freddie Jackson. Right. Freddie yeah. Jackson. He got injured. They put in C.J. Spiller. Fred Jackson's out for at least the next couple of weeks. C.J. Spiller ran for like 160, 170 yards. He's better than Freddie Jackson. I've always said that C.J. Spiller is better than Freddie Jackson. So we got him back. I'm telling you, give it. Give me another week. Give me another week with Buffalo. Dude. I don't think you guys are doing anything this year, buddy. But Whatever. Detroit, on the other hand, Whatever. Uh, rough game. Uh, weren't, it was close the whole time. And then Stafford throwing them fucking interceptions the whole game. He's got to get his shit together. Calvin Johnson saves it at the end. Yeah. We got to win. We started off 1-0. and that's, that's promising. I'm liking Detroit this year. And hopefully we can uh, we can go farther than the wild cards like last year. Yeah, suck it. Anyways... Get uh get to the official website. Wait, of w- wait, how was uh how was your fantasy going? Did you do good with the fantasy league? I don't want to talk about football this week, bro. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, it's, I'm taking it. You didn't do too good. I lost it. I lost in fantasy too, dude. It was a bad week in football. All right, it was a bad week <laughs> in football. All right, all right, <laughs> all right uh, the official website at WZR Radio is WZROnline.com. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army. Go to YouTube.com slash WZR Archive. Twitter, I don't know off the top of my head. Just go to WZROnline.com and uh, click the social media tab on the top bar. You can get all those links, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, whatever else. Official website at WZR Radio, WZROnline.com. We're still looking for t-shirts, guys. You can send, uh, <laughs> I haven't had any orders over the past week, dude. Nothing new. Whatever, dude. You can send it. Give me my money. If you send in, uh, from the United Kingdom, you gotta send me $25. You can send UK money, uh, UK currency. You just gotta make it $25 United States because it cost me $8 to ship out the shirts and I paid $15 for the shirt. So that only leaves me with a $2 profit. And for you Americans, I'm making a $1.50 profit. You can send your money, and all you guys in the chat, everybody said, hey, I want a t-shirt, please get a t-shirt. I get 200 t-shirts, I spend almost $3,000, all right, $3,000, and I got two boxes of t-shirts, and none, and four. Four and yeah, none yeah, and yeah, none yeah, of you. I, I, Wait a minute. I don't want to rub it in your face, but you had this fucking. I'm gonna sell 150 or 200, whatever it was, before the end of the year. I said, dude, you won't sell 50 of those fucking things. I didn't think it would be four. Bro, but I knew damn well just because people said, oh, I'd buy one. Doesn't right. mean they're actually gonna pony up the dough and buy one. No, but it's like I go out and I spend three thousand dollars on T-shirts because every single one of all you guys in the chat room right now, I see you. Oh, I want a T-shirt. Get a WCR Radio T-shirt. I go out. I do my part. I give you the address. I place the order. I get them. They're here, and none, yeah, and none of way too much money. and none of you it's guys. Way too much money. Did way too much work, and for nothing. I mean, hello. You know what I'm saying? You all dicked me. All you guys, everybody in the chat, you dicked me over. So send me some money. 180D, Delaware Ave, Troy, New York. One two one eight zero one eighty D as in dog, Delaware Ave, Troy, New York, one two one eight zero. If I don't get some orders this week, you're gonna hear it from me next week, man. You're gonna hear. It. It's not like they're going anywhere. I'm gonna have them. So if you and don't to, have money, and, if you, you know. And to Dino UK in the chat, he said that Matt get history. And by the way, I'm in the chat this week, first time in months. WVROnline.com slash chat. I'm in there. So was over a hundred other of the army. But, um, yeah, no, I didn't get my shirt yet. Didn't get my computer yet. No? And, uh, from the sounds of it, this man's not going to honor the bet we made. We made a bet, and he's not going to honor it. Waka, 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 waka. Yeah. Well, you hooked me up today, so I can't complain too much. So. <laughs> I did hook you up today, motherfucker. That's the last time. time. Remember, November 1st, dude. November 1st. I know. All right. Hey, look, okay. I appreciate you. You took care of me. I really appreciate it. All right. Get to our live chat room, WZROnline.com. Yeah, slash chat wzronline.com slash chat according to Matt Boone in my uh, instant message box right now we got some decent traffic tonight huh not bad we got over we got over 100 in the chat we got over 300 on the live stream and uh yeah Wow, there is a hundred in the chat room. That is crazy, man. All right, no doubt. Here we go. Let's get into some pro wrestling. We're going to talk TNA. No Surrender from Sunday night. We're going to run down Monday Night Raw. Just bits and pieces. Uh, we'll go through No Surrender from top to bottom. Monday Night Raw, we'll skip ahead, and then uh, we'll get to the Jerry Lawler segment. Like I said, I got some uh, Michael Cole audio clips that I'm going to play for you guys, and then we're uh, going to give you some exclusive news on the Jerry Lawler situation, what the future holds for him, etc., etc. And then the last thing, I know you want to chime in, the 
last thing is uh, we're going to be taking your live phone calls and uh, rapid fire in our numero dos. Yeah, oh, it's for your own benefit. There's actually, why am I echoing this whole time? It's not going away. There it is. Usually it goes away. Mm. No, it doesn't. God damn it, that's annoying. Anyways, there's multiple people in the chat room uh, asking for the address for the t-shirts again. So you should give that out. Uh, it's 180D. Somebody in the chat room, type this out. A couple of you guys. 180D, as in dog, Delaware, Ave, Troy, New York, 12180. Here, I'll do it for you. 180D, whoops, 180D, Delaware, Ave. There you go. You already got it. But here it is from me, too. 12180. All right, there you go. It's in the uh, chat room. Speaking of that chat room, get there. WZRonline.com slash chat. All right, TNA No Surrender from uh, Sunday Night, man. Top to bottom. You know what? I thought this was a great show, dude. Like, there were great wrestling matches. And once again, I hated the main event, man. The main event, the, every single time, bro, there's way too much. It's way overbooked. Way overbooked these main events with ref bumps and disqualifications and run in and it happened yeah. again, man. It happened again at at no surrender. You know, somebody kept. Why are we doing TNA first? Because TNA no surrender was on Sunday and Raw was on Monday. So we're going in order, my brother. That's how we always do it, right? TNA pay per views uh, first and then Raw. You know what I'm really saying? The main event wasn't good. Like I didn't see it. All I could do was read about it. It read. Like a good, that's probably, see, that's Bischoff Hogan booking, by the way. And they used to call it the Dusty Finish, where they had all the run ins and just all that chaos at the end of the main event. But um, I, I, I could see in a meeting when they're talking about it, <laughs> from not seeing the match but reading it, it reads like, wow, that's some pretty cool shit they're doing. Hardy's too injured, and he finally shows up, and they, they immediately go to work on his arm, and, you know, all this and that to sleep. But, um, yeah, I guess it's a clusterfuck when you're watching it, but it reads good. So that's probably their mindset when they're in those meetings booking the match. Like, we'll do this, we'll do that. And it sounds good because it does read good. Right. But I guess when you're watching it, it just doesn't play out as good as it sounds. You know? No, you're right. You're absolutely right, dude. I mean, on paper, things can look great, you know? And then, and not only that, dude, but the crowd. I mean, listen, you're in the impact zone. Thank God they're taking uh, Bound for Glory to Phoenix, Arizona. But you're in the impact zone, and it's just blah, dude. You know, especially for pay per view. The crowd sucks. The crowd was dead by the time the... Uh, Sorry, the was that blah? Blah, blah, like blah. I thought it was blah, blah. You say blah? Blah, 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 blah. It's the same, it's the same fucking thing. No, it's completely different. Damn, it's like tomato, tomato. Blah, blah. Blah? Uh, yeah, you, you, say, you say blah or blah. Blah, blah. No, I've never heard anybody say blah before. It's blah. Can I blame it on the New York accent? You do everything else, go ahead. All right, we'll blame it on the New York accent. <laughs> and the tired voice. You sound like you're straining just to speak today. It's no, it's, yeah, it's so I had two hours, three hours of sleep, two hours of sleep, you know, it's bad. What are you going to do? Well, like, you no, know, you want the honest truth, bro? The honest truth is last night, okay, after Raw went off the air and we had these initial reports coming in, and I'll be blunt with you guys, man, I didn't think Jerry was going to make it through the night. I mean, if you want me to be blunt about it, I, I didn't think he That's was going to make feeling, it. That's the feeling, yeah, I had that same feeling. Like, it, this is, we're, I'm just, I was just waiting for that, oh, God, we're going to have to write that fucking story, you know, he died. Yeah. I was just waiting for it. I did not think he was going to make it through the night from those initial reports. I mean, the reports were, you know, that he turned blue and that, you know, they they were using the uh, the shock thing that they do where they were shocking him, trying to bring him back to life. He was uh, clinically dead for uh, 20 minutes. Um, I, I mean, I didn't think he was going to make it, dude. So I stayed up and stayed up and stayed up. And then finally things started to calm down around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, I, I went to bed at 4.45, you know. Well, first of all, the reaction to you with your tired voice explanation rhymes with black and it's why. <laughs> but, uh, no, he wasn't dead for 20 minutes. He, he, uh, he didn't get oxygen to his brain for something like 20 minutes. He was clearly dead for something like 30 or 40 seconds. Oh, I thought, uh, well, I think one of the heart members said that it was 20 minutes. I, that's what that was, I, yeah, that's how long he didn't have oxygen to the brain. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. All yeah, right, he was what, brain dead for 20 minutes, but yeah, clinically dead for <laughs> 30, 40 seconds, which All right. is still, like, scary as shit, you know. All 
All right, we'll come back. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come back to uh, Lawler here in, uh, in in just a little bit. Awesome traffic, guys, tonight. Uh, record, you know, record traffic. We're up over 20,000 uniques on WZRonline.com today, which is crazy, crazy, crazy. So, all right, we'll get into uh, Lawler here in a little bit. Like I said, some exclusive news. we got SmackDown spoilers, all that good stuff. TNA No Surrender from Sunday night. They kicked it off, man. They uh, they did both semifinals for the Bound for Glory series, right? Yeah, Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe, and then they went right into James Storm again. Bully Ray, and then the winners of those matches went on to face each other later in the night. So, the opening match, Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe, they kicked it off, man. I mean, it was a hot show to, to start, you know. Um, a lot of near falls towards the end, and uh, Hardy got the uh, the clean win here. One, two, three. Uh, they did a bunch of reverses towards the end of the match. Samoa Joe went for a muscle buster, and uh, Hardy, you know, turned it into a sunset flip, and... Um, then I forget how Hardy won. How did Hardy win here? I think he hit the twist of fate, right? Thanks, so. Swan Don, I think. I'm not even sure. I know the uh the uh storm the, what the fuck? Storm and um Bully Ray. Bully Ray ended with uh, the Bobby Roode running, which surprised me because personally I thought Storm was gonna win the whole thing. And uh, we do Storm and Rude because uh, I don't see Austin Aries keeping the title. But um, well, you're still yeah, gonna I'm you're, surprised you're, that they did a run in to finish uh, one of the final semifinals of this long you're, drawn out tournament. You're still gonna do Storm and Bobby Rude, but it's not gonna be for the title. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's you're right. a one on one. Um, set that up. Yeah. So Jeff Hardy got the uh, the 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 opening pin, and then like you said, man, we went right into James Storm and Bully Ray. Uh, you know they had Earl Hebner in there at first. They did the one ref bump, and then uh, Brian Stifler. Stifler, what a horrible last name that. Brian Stifler was uh, like, oh, like from American Pie, like right? Stifler. Yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, he comes in, dude, and they did another ref bump there. And then while the referee was down, or both referees were down, Bobby Roode comes in and smashes him over the head with a beer bottle. And then Earl Hebner comes around and does the three count, where Glass is laying all over the ring. It's like, wait a minute, Earl Hebner should have stood up and said, yo, where the fuck did all this glass come from? Something went on. I'm not doing the three yeah, they're, count. They're, but that's that's pro wrestling. Traditionally in wrestling, the referees are just retarded. I right, mean, right. <laughs> stupid. Like, real life dumb guys. Because there's always finishes where somebody will run and hit somebody with a chair, and they'll go to slide the chair out of the ring, but it won't make it all the way. It'll still be, like, kind of half in the ring, half out of the ring. Right. And the ref just doesn't even notice it. Like, oh, right. there's a chair in the ring. I don't know. Maybe somebody sat down for a minute. I don't know. But, you know, it's like the referees are just dumb. So, you yeah. know, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. It's it's pro wrestling. You know what I mean? It's a little stuff like that. that they me, look the other way. Me and you pick up, dude, but other people don't, you know, they don't look that much into it. It's like, shut up and enjoy the show, right? That's what people are probably saying. Yeah, shut yeah. up shut up and enjoy the show, you Fucking idiots knocking. Right? <laughs> there was a uh, backstage segment. It was Miss Tessmacher. It's basically the student, Miss Tessmacher, Tara, you know, her mother or the trainer or the teacher. You know what I'm saying, dude? Tessmacher's always. Like the, uh, the Tristratus Mickey James angle without the lesbian <laughs> overtones. There you go. There you go. So that led us into a knockouts match. It was for, no for the uh, knockouts title. Tess Mocker pick up picked up the uh, the win here. The first part of the match was pretty technical, and then uh, the second part, the crowd kind of died out. A lot of people didn't notice this, but Tara kind of went heel here. Um, I mean, it wasn't a full fledged heel turn. I'm guessing they're gonna follow that up on Impact this uh, this Thursday night. But see what happens. I think that program is gonna continue with uh, Tess Mocker and Tara. So I mean, the crowd was dead. And then this is where uh, Hogan Hogan comes out, right? Or Hogan's in the back, and uh, he has Bobby Roode and James Storm, both of them arrested. Uh, they're causing a big police. scene. Yeah. yeah, big old you know police escort them out. So then we have uh, Austin Aries against the. Uh, it's a mystery man, right, from the Aces and Aces. What do you think of this, this whole uh, thing with the big brawl and the pool parts? And all, what do you think of that whole segment as a whole? Oh, I can give you an example. I didn't get to see it, but it read like it was really cool, but it, maybe it was a clusterfuck well, like the, uh, the main event. I, I, can't I can give you this. The mystery guy, this is what I've been told. Uh, the mystery guy that was under the mask, I believe, and I don't have it confirmed, but I'm pretty confident. I would say 90% that it was Mike Knox that was uh, under the mask. So we've got him and we've former got... Former WWE guy. Former WWE guy. We've got Luke Gallows coming in. It wasn't Gallows. 
Gallows was not under the mask. It was Mike Knox. Uh, about ninety, ninety percent. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the big guy. I'm ninety percent sure. Matt that, Morgan is Matt Morgan still in TNA? No, no. Morgan's gonna be coming to WWE as soon as the uh, yeah, yeah. TNA WWE lawsuit's over. But yes, it, uh, I'm ninety percent sure it was Mike Knox. We're gonna follow up on that later. But uh, there's a little exclusive for you, right? There you go. I heard. Uh, you know what you should do also, real quick, before I forget. You've been doing a poll every week. Yeah, what do you want? Put a poll up. Well, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. Should Raw have continued last night after the uh, Jerry Lawler thing and see what the people think? That's a good poll. I wanted to do something regarding Jerry Lawler, but um, I didn't. I didn't know how to go about it. You know. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, here in a minute, everybody, you can uh, log on to. I'm sure he's doing it now. I think I am typing. You can log on to wzronline.com. The question will ask: Should Raw have continued following the uh, the Jerry Lawler incident tragedy last night? Uh, yes or no, and uh, go vote, because we're, we're going to be talking about that later, so it'll be good to know what you guys think uh, as a whole. WZR Online, that's kind of. All right, should Raw have continued following the Jerry Lawler incident? You just want a yes or no? Yeah. All right, yes or no. We will add that poll right now. All right, it is up. Uh, just go, like Boone said, go to wzronline.com, guys. It's over on the right hand side of the website. You like how fast I do that? Bada bing, bada boom, pulls up, great, boom. Man. I was trying to stall for you while you were doing it there, but um, right. yeah, back to TNA. Uh, the the aces and eights ordinary <laughs> thing. What did you think? Well, like I said, I didn't get to see it. I was reading it. Read like it was a cool segment, but. Then again, so did the main event, and you're saying that was a clusterfuck. So how how was right. it? Right. Well, what Boone's saying is during the match, all the aces and ace guys come out, right? And this big old brawl breaks out, and you know the the TNA roster comes out, and you know it's the, the it's the whole TNA roster. They're all together, and they're taking on the okay, aces. Including Hardy, because that's what now, set up the uh, the big angle for the match in the main here's, event. Here's the deal. You're asking me how I feel about this. I've been watching Impact the last couple of weeks, bro. They've mm -hmm. they've done it three times in a row every single impact for the past two weeks three weeks maybe even three weeks yeah they're really doing it it's they've the done NWO all over again you know they, what i mean it's this off and hogan dude, saying well this worked fucking 10 15 years ago let's do it again they've you know, done this yeah but they've done the same thing when they first did it on impact a couple weeks ago it was hot it was awesome dude the crowd was going crazy da -da 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 -da. then they did it last week and then they did it on the pay-per-view. It's the, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of this fucking Ryback over in WWE. Guy comes out and he squashes people week after week after week after week. And it's like, dude, it's stale, man. It's getting stale. It's the same thing with this whole TNA roster versus the Ace and Eights. I mean, we've seen it three times already. And then again on a pay-per-view? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Enough is enough. But go on. You gotta. Yeah, they gotta you know what they're trying to. New. You yeah. know what they're trying to do, dude. You, they're gonna. The 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 angle's gonna culminate at at Bound for Glory, and you've got. I mean, no surrender was a throwaway pay per view, dude. I mean, the buy rate for that pay per view, uh, I'm guessing like five thousand, dude, tops. You know, dude, it's gonna be like an all time low buy rate. Think about it. Going into the pay per view, I think there were only three matches. And then they made all the matches on Impact last week, three days before the pay-per-view aired. I didn't even know. I told you last week. I said, "There's a you, you, you said there's a TNA pay-per-view this week." I said, "There's a TNA pay-per-view this week." Are you serious? Remember that last well, week? That and yeah, they're going head to head with the uh, opening week of NFL. <laughs> That's gonna hurt them, even if it was a good show. And you're no, well, it wasn't even a, a well-built show. So it's just bad all the way around. It was a good show, except for the main event, but it wasn't well built, like you said, man. That's not, what I mean. A good yeah. show in terms of promotion. Yeah, and then they're going to, you know, they're going Peyton Manning's debut in Denver against the Steelers, bro. That's a huge game. You know, opening weekend, like you said. Oh, man. I mean, the, the buy rate. Like it, yeah. yeah, it's it's not going to be good. So, anyway, so they brawled, right? They brawl, and then eventually Hogan comes out with a baseball bat, and he's screaming, I want security to lock every single door in this building, da 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 da, -da. And I'm thinking, like, like, the Orlando cops don't have anything better to do then fucking <laughs> then guard the aces and eights from coming into the impact zone dude okay dude bring the whole goddamn police listen, listen, escort think of it logically okay there's yes. people being murdered there's yes people being raped yes there's people selling drugs uh -huh. and but wait a minute the main event this is the most important match of the evening officer. Oh. we need you uh -huh. to go 
Yes, get the fuck out of here, dude. It was stupid, bro. The whole goddamn thing's stupid. So he comes out and he wants security. Lock every door in this building. I don't want anybody coming in here. We're on a complete lockdown. We're going into lockdown mode. Nobody leaves the arena. Nobody comes into the arena. It's like a, school, a high school lockdown, you know? Somebody commits a crime outside. Nobody comes in. Nobody comes out. We're in lockdown. Yeah. Right? We had uh, Zima Ion against Sanjay Dutt for the X Division title. This is a really good match. I mean, Sanjay Dutt's one of my favorite wrestlers right now, dude. In the, well, you, uh, you forgot the setup there during the Aces and Aces Austin Aries thing. And I mean, it's common knowledge, but Hardy was injured during this spot, and I, was he stretched, stretched out, or was he just taken to the back hurt? Oh, that's right. Uh, one of the Aces and Aces members threw him into a uh, into the ring post, and he did the whole the, the whole shoulder injury. So they kind of hyped up, is Jeff Hardy going to be in the main event later tonight? And then they showed him backstage at one point, dude, you know, getting medical attention. Um, that was later in the show, so... The uh, the X Division title match was really good, dude. They had uh, awesome Hurricane Ranas, dude. Like a, a variation of, of a couple different ones. It was really, I mean, these guys tore the house. They'll probably match of the night right here for the uh, for the X Division title. What else did we have? We had uh, Rob Van Dam and, and Magnus. The crowd was dead. I mean, it was a decent match, man. But the crowd, once again, the crowd was dead for this, dude. Dead, you know. Um. Then there was a, a backstage interview. It was Daniels and Kazarian. They, uh, Kaz was making up words left and right, dude. Kind of like I do sometimes, right? Make up words. Yeah. Make them right. <laughs> um, they, uh, there's a, there's an ongoing rib, right? And a lot of people don't, uh, don't know. Here's another exclusive for you. Christy Hemi, a couple weeks ago, when she announced, uh, the tag team champions, right? When she announced, uh, Daniels and Kazarian, she said, Please welcome the World Tag Team Champions of the World. The World Tag Team Champions of the World. Do you get it? She yeah. fucked up a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, now during all their promos and, you know, backstage interviews and segments, they say, and the we are the World Tag Team Champions of the World. It's just a little backstage rib that people don't pick up on. So there you go. It's just a little we excuse. are the world. We, we are, are the children. <laughs> Michael Jackson, baby. Get on it, Michael Jackson. Um, so that led us into a match. It was Christopher Daniels and Kazarian against AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. I take that back, man. This I heard is, this. I heard this was amazing, this match. This was great, man. This was probably... I take it back, man. Sanjay Dutt and Zima Ion was probably second best match of the night. This was... Uh, this topped them all, dude. They had near fall after near, near fall towards the end of the match. Angle did a lot of work, man, for being injured. Um, he always does. That guy's... Crazy, He's a beast, know? bro. He is such a beast, dude. You know, nothing can stop him, dude. I mean, it's crazy. I mean... Oh, I could. I'd kick his ass in two seconds. Oh, I'm first. sure you would. I'd kick your ass in two <laughs> seconds, too, motherfucker. But <laughs> it's a different story for another day, right? <laughs> yeah. We, uh... So that... I'm mean, just an awesome match here for the, uh, for the tag team titles. Hogan was backstage, right? And he's... You know, he's got the policeman with him, and he says, uh, if anybody comes to the ring tonight, uh, you cuff them and you take them out of the arena during the main event, talking about it. Bully Ray did an interview backstage and uh, said he feels a little bad for what happened to Hardy, but either way, he's going to beat him. So then, this is where shit got weird, dude, for the main event, right? So they're teasing all night long that Jeff Hardy, is he going to be able to, is he going to be able to wrestle in the main event, right? So Hardy comes out, or Hogan comes out, right? And they go back and forth, back and forth, and it's not making any sense, dude. He's going back, you know, Hogan's telling him, let's hold off the match until this Thursday night. And Bully Ray's saying, no, I don't want to do that. I want, I want Hardy to come out right now. So I'm thinking to myself, something's up with Hardy, man. And I'll be honest, do you want me to be blunt again? I'm thinking maybe Hardy relapsed or something. Maybe he's drunk. I, I don't know, man. It just, something seemed weird. It seemed odd. I see it, but I mean, obviously he wrestled already and he came out for the run-in, so I, I would doubt it's drugs or alcohol. I know it would turn out to be nothing, it's just an angle, but it, it read to me like an angle, like they're building up that yeah. he's going to be so hurt, how can he possibly compete, and then he'll compete and win, which is exactly what they Well, I thought, I thought Hogan was out there, and they're stalling, man. It seemed like they were trying to stall and cut this promo to see if Hardy would get better if Hardy was messed up. I thought it was a big stall job, and that's why earlier in the night, they did the Hardy injury angle, because they were going to take him out of the main event and put somebody else in. So when Hogan came out and going back and forth between Bully Ray, I thought some Somebody other than Jeff Hardy was going to come out because Jeff Hardy was fucked up backstage 
and they had a yeah, change of with plans. His, with his history, I could see how you would think that. But like I said, it, it was obvious to me without even seeing the show that they're just building up sympathy for him because how can he compete? He's hurt, and then he'll come out and win, which is what they did. So it read exactly like what it was to me. But with his history, I could see how you could think that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't know. So that was that was no surrender, right? From Sunday night. What, I mean, you you did play by well, Hardy play. won. You didn't get to that, but yeah. Well, you said it. You said Hardy won, right? They they, they built him up. He gets the sympathy, and then he comes out and he wins the match. He won with a. Uh, I think he hit two twist of fates, right? Or uh, two swanton. No, it was uh, two twist of fates, and then uh, Clint, yeah, and, well, and then a swanton. He, did, he had tried it a few times, and Bully Ray would cut him off, and then Bully Ray hit the. Uh, his finisher and he right, twice right. and then Hardy kicked out. But yeah, ultimately he won with two twists of fate in this one time. And uh, he's the Bound for Glory series uh, winner, so he'll be going on to face, I guess it'll be Austin Aries. Austin, at, uh, Austin Aries. Glory. Yep, Austin Aries at uh, Bound for It'd be Glory. Still champion, but how, how long do we have until Bound for Glory? We've got about four weeks, three or four weeks. It's oh, okay, it's, it's the next pay per view? Next pay per view, yep. Yep. Okay. So, all right, guys, get to our live chat room, WZRonline.com. Um, Slash chat, what happened? We're down to 90s. People left. Are we not good enough for you guys? Is that what the problem is? We suck tonight? Something. I think we're doing good. I think we're killing it tonight, to be honest with you. But whatever. Get there. WZRonline.com. Dot com. Dot com. Slash chat. WZRonline.com. Slash chat. Sharky325. I'm not boring. Come on, bro. Never boring. I was gonna say I, it doesn't feel like a really good show to me yet, but give us time. We haven't even gotten to the meat of the show yet. We've still got all the major shit to talk about. You guys can hear that. I got a bottle cap and I keep tapping it. I didn't know you guys could hear yeah. that. Can you Bro, hear? We it? can hear when you fucking fart, dude. I mean, you you got a loud uh, microphone over there. Sorry, I guess I'll put the bottle cap down. Hmm. Yeah, put the fucking bottle cap down, asshole. We're I'm doing just, a fucking radio show here. I'm just Fuck. fidgeting. I got my you desk. Your ADD acting up over there. Or I what? got, what I got, got, I got my desk back. I feel good, man. I got everything back. You know, what I mean? last week feel was a, a rough show. Speaking of feeling at home, how, who's all in there right now in your house? Do you want to do a rant or do we not want to do a rant? I can't. Uh, I can't do a rant. I can't do that. Oh, got to be. Uh, love the rant. Got to be quiet tonight, man. Got to be quiet. You know what I'm saying? All right. You know what I'm saying? Alright, um, alright, Monday Night Raw from <laughs> last night, dude. So, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, your man. Boone's a mark, he's, he's a mark for Bret Hart. Boone's a mark for Bret Hart. I grew up, I, I, yeah, but, uh, well, oh, that's an echo, I thought it was music. Uh, yeah, I grew up with the Bret Hart, Shawn Michael stuff for WWE. I was more of a WCW, NWA fan, but, yeah, that's what was going on in WWE when I was really, really a Die Hard fan. And uh, somebody brought up in the chat earlier that uh, Bret Hart is definitely not aging well. I mean, you got to remember he had a stroke and he right. had so many friends and family people die. And he's gone through hell his whole life, you know. So uh, you would understand why he's not aging well. But he does look like a broken down old man. I he's should, I, you know what, bad. I shouldn't say this. I re but listen, I'm, gonna, I'm being blunt tonight, all right? I'm being blunt and I shouldn't yeah. say this, right? But um, I was thinking, man, Jerry Lawler's hospitalized, right? And it yeah. just, listen, it, it went through my head. I'm not trying to bash nobody or nothing like that. But, you know, there's uh, there's free health care in Canada. I'm just, I don't know, it came to, it came to my head, dude. If there was ever a place. What if you're, if how there does was that a, work if you're an American citizen in Can Canada for an event? Do you, do you get no. to get the free health care? People, people go from America to Canada oh, you're right. to, yeah. ha to have surgery and things like that done because it's free health care. So I guess if there was ever a place for a heart attack or a stroke to happen, it would be Canada, right? I'm just saying, dude, you know? That's a thought. You know, I had thoughts, too, like... um. Like kids, if you're a young kid and you're watching and you, and you know, maybe you, you know wrestling's not real, but it's more real than it is to, to people our age. How do they, Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler are supposed to hate each other and then something tragic like last night happens and Michael Cole is suddenly Jerry Lawler's best friend and crying and, and begging him to pull through like, you know, you know, you look, how do fans, you know what I mean? How do they react to that when you're young and like you're hearing and seeing this kind of stuff? It, it really breaks down the walls and then when they go back to regular storylines in a few weeks, How's that going? You know what I mean? That kind of stuff goes to my head, and obviously another thing that went to my head was the rating, which you I guess said it really. It really breaks what? Breaks down the walls. Breaks the walls. Yeah. Okay. 
I had to. I had to do. I, I knew that's what you were doing. But um, right and the there. ratings turned out to be a pretty shitty rating, in my opinion. I thought, like, just for my own opinion, it was like the old days during the attitude there, where something big would happen and everybody would be on the phones, you know. You called me, so I immediately turned it on. And normally I wouldn't turn on shit. I don't care what's going on. I was like, I got to see what's going on. Can I, I immediately called my, my buddy Michael Moody. He turned it on. Like, so I, I wonder how many other people did that. Obviously not enough because the rating wasn't all that great. The now last you, show before the pay-per-view. Now, now we're talking about health care, and you say break the break the walls down, and then I play Jericho. Oh, who's God, a, you're so no, no, no. Then I play Jericho's theme, who's a Canadian himself. You see, everything came yeah. together. Everything came together right there. I'm just, I don't know. Everything came together. Well, you pat yourself on the back. Though. I was kind of you're a good producer. I was kind of patting myself on the back, dude. Kind of patting myself well, uh, on the back. Here we go with that fucking tap again. What happened with um last week? Paul Heyman and CM Punk that whole thing. Did was Paul Heyman even on the show this week? Because I saw the main event segment with uh, Punk, uh, Cena, and Brett. But was Heyman anywhere this week? Yeah, Heyman came out um the okay. during the tag team match with uh, Jerry Lawler, right? That's where Heyman came out, and uh, you know Punk basically walked out of the match, and Heyman came out. They were on the outside in the corner, kind of talking, you know, having this cat, ignoring everything going on in the ring, and uh, then they walked out after the match was over. They walked out together, so it was kind of a subtle. Did you notice know what? Did, did you notice that Punk was wearing pink? Uh, I guess it's a tribute to Bret Hart last night. He's been doing that for the last couple of weeks, man. He, uh, he even came out on Twitter and, and said, you know, it's a reference to Bret Hart. So, and it was Canada last night, so Montreal, of course, is going to do it there, too, you know? Yeah, so, it was just, yeah, it was a lot what, of weird things. What, like, with the, the Bret Hart, well, uh, we'll do it. What, what'd, you uh, think, what'd, you, what'd you think of the, uh, actually, you didn't see the uh, the opening segment. I'm going to go through this real quick. we only got nine minutes until we go to the break. And then, during the break, sure. I missed uh, last night's main event promo. The, the whole Jerry Lawler stuff, I dude. Thought, yeah, I, I was, the whole thing. Dude, I was non-stop working with the Jerry Lawler thing. You know how that stuff like that goes, man. So, I oh, missed yeah. I missed the entire promo. I put it up on the websites today, and I still haven't gotten a chance to watch it. I just copied over Pretty the embed, embed code. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to play that during the commercial break. It's about six or seven minutes long. So I think it's just highlights, but nonetheless. So Bret Hart comes out, right? It was longer than six or seven minutes. It was, it yeah. was good, too. Bret Hart comes out and uh, says, you know, he got a huge reaction, dude. I mean, it was like a five-minute ovation where the crowd just would not stop chanting, dude, and clapping and cheering. And uh, he milked it. You know, he milked it for a while and said thanks. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, I'm interrupting you a lot. Was this the opening? Because I thought, I, I was wondering when Bret came out for the main event segment, the, the reaction wasn't that great, maybe because of the Waller thing or no, no, no. because they had already seen him. So he, he he came out. He opened the show, dude. He cut a big promo. Said okay, it's, cool. It's great. I gotta watch that. Said it's great to be back here in in Montreal. It's been a long time. It's been 15 years since I've been back in Montreal. He says, uh, you know, talks a little bit about the screw job. And uh, CM Punk eventually comes out, cuts him off, and uh, talks about beating John Cena this Sunday at Night of Champions and leaving, you know, Cena a broken, broken shell of a man, much like Bret Hart is these days. And, uh, I mean, that was pretty much it, dude. The segment ended. Massive heat on Punk, obviously. Got him over as a heel in Canada. You never know with the crowds in Canada. I mean, it's bizarro world. They call it in WWE, right? And yeah. uh, Michael Cole announced that later in the night that Bret Hart would come out out and uh, talk to John Cena or do an interview with uh, John Cena later in the night yeah. and then they did the uh, the whole raw active thing that they do I was going to CM Punk's opponent for tonight it's going to be Brodus Clay you knew that wasn't going to happen it's going to be Jerry Lawler you knew that wasn't going to happen and it was going to be Randy Orton so you know it was going to be Randy Orton so you go and you vote you put in the hashtag Punk Lawler Punk Brodus or Punk Orton Orton wound up winning there was a tag team match it was R-Truth and Kofi Kingston against Antonio Cesaro and The Miz they announced uh, during the match the Night of Champions pre-show it's going to be a battle royal and then the winner of that is going to go on to face Antonio Cesaro for the U.S. title later on in the pay-per-view. So they added a match, two matches to the pay-per-view. One for the pre-show of Battle Royal, and then the actual match for the U.S. title on the pay-per-view. Uh, Kobe hits the uh, Trouble in Paradise on uh, Cesaro for the win here. It was a good tag team match for uh, for what it was. Not a lot of time. Well, that know. brings up a good point. What if Jerry Lawler would have won that, that, that bowl? Like, that would have been fun. I, I heard 
also that they were rewriting, you know better than me because you talk to people, they were rewriting Raw up until like 8 p.m. They were, right they the did. They did, and they do that every week. It seems like every single week, dude, they're constantly rewrite, rewriting Raw, you know? And it makes for a... I mean, stick with your game plan, man. You know, I mean, when you come to well, TV... Well, think of the other talent that's got to go out and cut a promo, and they change it right before the fucking show, and you got to try and, like, completely change what you were planning on doing. Like, they give you, like, your bullet points or your, or your, your basic idea, and, and in your head, if you're a worker... They're like, all right, I'm going to say something like this, or I'll talk about that. And then they change it, and you got no time to really put any thought into it. And if you've got to go out there and just wing it, like we do with the radio <laughs> show, you know, it's different, though, because well, we don't stare at 20,000 people chanting at us. Probably I, do it. But listen, dude, you know that we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. All those polls are rigged anyways, you know what I mean? So if, yeah, if Waller yeah. won, it would have been Orton anyway. Anyways, we had, uh, what, we had a Divas match. You know what? This is a really good Divas match, man. Finally, we no. got a good, yeah, what? man, it was Eve Torres and Layla and Caitlyn. Uh, three on three against Alicia Fox, Natalia, and Beth Phoenix. I liked it, man. And we shit all over the Divas matches, dude. You know, I mean, the crowd was was kind of dead here, but I thought it was good, man. Layla looked good. Uh, basically, Eve came in towards the end of the match and stole the pin. Layla, Layla was, you know, taking on Caitlyn. Um, or not, not yeah, Caitlyn. Seems to not Caitlyn. With you big time on the uh, quality of that divas match, by the way. Really? I thought it was divas. I mean, no, listen, yeah. it's a divas match. You know what I mean? The, uh, you're not gonna get five star matches, but I thought it was decent. It was more. It was more decent than what we've seen from divas matches in the past. I thought it was all right. Caitlyn's come a long ways. Um, you know, from being coming from NXT, you know. They, uh, I'm just going through the matches here. I'm kind of skipping the, uh, the backstage segments. Uh, CM Punk was pissed off at AJ backstage and, uh, basically questioned, you know, why he's got a match tonight and why John Cena doesn't. Then we had, uh, our Raw active match, right? We had CM Punk and Randy Orton. Randy Orton won the poll. So, we had that, and, uh, this is what, basically, the end of this match, right? Orton went, oh, jeez, now we got text messages, um, the end of the match came, uh, Orton, Orton had the upper hand, right, and was about to set up for an RKO, and Dolph Ziggler came in and attacked him from behind, and then that resulted in a DQ. So, no. man, oh man. So, well, that's. No, I, no, yeah, no, no listen. Give me the update here. I've been hearing rumors that Ric Flair might be coming in as Dolph Ziggler's uh, mouthpiece. Last no, year. Is there anything to that? What is going on here? Jesus fucking Christ. It's all right. What's well, it's nonstop? You don't hear I've droid. Been text, I've been getting texts the whole show, too. Nobody even knows because I can, I can keep my mouth shut. All right, you gotta uh, listen. So, do, this is the big setup to what we need to talk about. So, Dolph Ziggler comes in and attacks uh, Randy Orton, right? That okay. sets up a two-on-one, and it's Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk. They're, they're basically beating the shit out of Randy Orton. So, this is where Jerry Lawler stands up from the announce booth and comes in. And then, when we return from the commercial break, we found out that AJ, during the break... Uh, had made a tag team matchup that was going to be Randy Orton teaming with Jerry Lawler against the team of CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler, right? I so, heard I heard at 62 years old, Jerry Lawler threw a fucking drop kick in the match. That's crazy, man. He 62 did. 62 years old. He did. And then, I don't know if this is going to come out later, but I went back and rewatched the match earlier today, and Dolph Ziggler hit an elbow to Jerry Lawler's chest that was mm. brutal. I mean, it looked... Brutal man, and and I'm not I'm not saying that was the cause of anything, but Ziggler hit this elbow to Lawler's chest, and man, oh man, was it stiff, man! Well, I doubt and, that would do anything, but I mean the blood pressure going up from running around like he, he's 62 years old. You run around, you get your blood pressure up, you get your heart rate up, and you have to stress. Wow! And all this, I mean that, that kind Winter, of stuff really adds up. Winter Slayer, you you heard that, man? I can't believe it. there's a train going by outside, dude. It's a couple blocks away, and he heard the horn. He heard the, <laughs> he heard the fucking horn from the train going. Jesus, you guys can hear a pin drop in here. That's ridiculous. I'm telling you, man. If a, if a mouse pisses on cotton three three doors down, we're gonna hear it. Wow. You got a good microphone. I guess so, man. That is crazy. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, so they set up a tag team match here, right? And this is where you were asking about Heyman earlier. Well, yeah. Heyman, Heyman comes out to ringside, and CM Punk jumps out of the ring, and they're just kind of standing on the outside, casually talking about, hey, we're here in Montreal, hey, what are you doing later, you want to go out to dinner, da -da -da. basically Punk turned his back on the entire match, right, and after it was over, Punk and Heyman walked out, 
and you know Vicky's all pissed off you know Vicky's on the outside saying hey punk we got a match here man help out Dolph Ziggler what are you doing she's screaming excuse me. yeah excuse me what are you doing she's saying what do you do there's a match in progress here you know what I mean so that was uh, that was that and then Punky and uh, Heyman walked out that's the last we had seen actually then we came we went to a commercial break we come back and uh, Matt Stryker asked uh, Paul Heyman about his relationship with CM Punk and Punk jumped in and answered and just simply said, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. And they walked off, which was kind of cool. He said that, yeah, he said that during his famous promo uh, in Vegas when he, uh, when he first blew up. I think, are we up to the wall or stuff now? We should break and yeah. save that for uh, hour two. All right, we'll do that. We'll uh, we'll take a uh, commercial break right now. Like I said, I haven't seen the, uh, I rewatched the uh, the tag team match with, you know, Randy Orton, Jerry Lawler, Dolph Ziggler, and CM Punk. But I have not seen the ending promo of Raw last night. So I'm going to play that right now. And then when we come back, I'm going to play the Michael Cole stuff where he addresses, you know, what's going on with Jerry Lawler. It's three different segments. That that clip's about four minutes long. And then we're going to take I a would, six. I would save the Cole stuff like for while we're talking about it and just be like, and then here's what he said, play it, and then we'll react to shit like that. Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do that. All right, so here we go. We're going to take a quick commercial break. You guys are going to hear the uh, promo from last night between John Cena and CM Punk. We'll come back. We're going to talk the Jerry Lawler situation. Like I said, we've got SmackDown spoilers, Saturday Morning Slam, um, Superstars, also, all that stuff, we have man. To, uh, rapid Fire. Yeah, we got to put the Rapid Fire up before we go to the break, too. If you want to go do that, I'll plug that real quick. Uh, yep. yep. Okay, so everybody head over to Facebook.com slash... Ryan Clark, Ryan Clark WZR. WZR. Once you get there, the uh, top host should say something along the lines of submit your questions and comments for this week's rapid fire segment. Once we get back in hour number two, it's all about you. Phone calls and rapid fire. We try and be interactive, guys. Keep them brief, one line or two lines, so we can get to as many as possible. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Get over there. Get over there! Wow, we're gonna we got a lot of stuff going on uh, post raw or post WZR radio tonight. Anyways, you're listening to WZR radio with Matty B and Ryan C. We'll be back right after this. And so I guess we'll just come back. I didn't know that's how it ended. I thought it was a uh, promo the whole way, but that was a man. I'll tell you what, for everything that was going down backstage with uh, Jerry Lawler and and those guys had to come out there. Uh, what a promo by John Cena. I said, what a promo by John Cena. I said, what uh, a... I just got back, man. I was waiting to figure out what's up. What's up? I said, what a promo by uh, by John Cena, man. Uh, last night, well, that was good, man. He did good. Punk did good. I would say, especially considering knowing that the Lawler shit had happened, that they had to go out there and, and perform. They were the only guys, really, to do a real big segment since that happened. I mean, there was matches, but, but the, you know, to have to perform as characters. Um... I thought Cena was good until he started doing the cheap fucking, I'm going to speak in French to get over the baby face shit. Even though a lot of people thought that was clever, I thought it was just bullshit. And Punk was getting cheap heat by, you know, busting on bread, busting on, you know, you know, whatever. It was just cheap heat, cheap baby face shit. But all in all, it was a good performance segment as far as the, their performances. I thought it was really well done. Especially, like I said, considering they knew what was going on with Waller and had to go out there and act, you know, it's, it's right. got to be hard. All right. Now, listen. Let me get back into Raw. I'm going to uh, – real quick, man. Alberto Del Rio, there was a match with uh, Tyson Kidd. Um, basically, the crowd was dead here, man. Uh, there was no commentary from this point forward. Uh, Michael Cole was silent. So, you know, it was just the crowd. And then you were watching matches. You had uh, Alberto Del Rio defeated Tyson Kidd. This was uh, a real quick match. Del Rio won. Uh, Sheamus and David Otunga. They did a whole segment earlier in the night where Sheamus did a deposition um, with David Otunga. It was so stupid. That whole thing. I mean, a lot of people on Facebook said they thought that was funny. I, it was just stupid humor from WWE. You knew it was, was going to happen here. Stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, uh, AJ came out uh, towards the end of the Sheamus David Otunga match, and then Booker T cut her off, said uh, that if Sheamus uses the brogue kick again, he's going to be stripped of the world title and he'll be fired. Um, we had Rey Mysterio and Cody Rhodes. This was uh, another quick match. There was no Sin Cara during the match, which was uh, kind of odd. That was the first match after the Lawler thing, right? The uh, Cody no, Rhodes. No, no. They had Sheamus and David Otunga, they had Tyson Kidd and Alberto Del 
Rio. And then the main event oh, that segment. Was the first I had seen, yeah. Then the uh, the main event segment was you know what you guys just heard, and I, I thought Cena did a great job with uh, with his promo last night. So that brings us back to the Jerry Lawler situation. And um, right, now we can get into it. We got to really dissect this thing on uh, from every angle. There's a lot to talk right. about. With it, like I well, said. This is out of a little respect. All right. Should we put that down low? Can you guys still hear that? If I if I put it low, and we can talk over that, right? We'll just kind of keep the music playing as we talk about. If we can hear you farting. I'm sure they can hear the music. <laughs> All right, no doubt. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can hear this music, and we'll just kind of talk over it. I can turn it down, or I can turn it up if it's. Uh, you know, if it's too loud, for you, let me know. Uh, by the way, before we get into it, get to our uh, get to our live chat room, wzronline.com. Dot com. Slash chat, wzronline.com slash chat. Get there. So I can't turn it up much more. I was hoping you were going to have me turn it down because I don't want to talk over it. But we'll do that. So, I mean, the Lawler stuff, man, I mean, what a... It's just, you never know when something like that is going to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, it's live TV. Anything can happen. And it did last night, man. And like we said, man, when, when it initially happened, there were, uh, you know what, I'm going to turn that off. I can't, I can't talk about it. Yeah, it's annoying. It. Yeah, it, it definitely is. But um, basically what happened, or what we know happened is... Jerry Lawler had taken part in the tag team match about 20 or 30 minutes earlier in the night and came back. I think he called another match at commentary. And then there were people, you know, we got a bunch of ringside reports that people said, you know, he put his hands over his face and kind of was head down on the announce booth and kind of went silent on the commentary team and then eventually started convulsing and collapsed to the floor. Um, yeah, I'd already grabbed his, his either his left shoulder or his chest, and then slowly just kind of collapsed to the ground. And right. um, I guess the uh, the WWE medics were immediately on the scene. I guess maybe sixty seconds before they had him backstage, and then they were working on him back there. Right. And like we were talking about off air, if this had happened, because he wrestles a lot of local indie shows, if mm-hmm. this had happened at one of those, we it would Jay Lawler would be dead right now. Let's just be honest. It was he would the fact right. that they were. In the Bell Center, which is near hospitals down there in Montreal, so they were, the hospitals were close by. The WWE medics were on hand. If that, they saved his life, he would he would have died if that was not a WWE show. Those you know medics, I mean? those medics are true heroes. There is no heroes. question about it, man. Heroes, absolute heroes. Um, and you know, basically, Lawler had complained. I mean, some people on the broadcast. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it, but some people heard. You know, I know that he started slurring his words. Uh, at one point, and then some people said that they kind of heard him snoring, which is an example of a stroke. And then I know the WWE ring crew came out and cleaned up some vomit. So when he went down to the floor, he uh, he vomited, and then, like you said, paramedics immediately rushed out to the scene and, and saved his life, man. They didn't want to... I believe they carried him to the back. I don't think he was on the stretcher. They had a stretcher out no, there. No, he they... was. Originally, I had heard that they carried him, but no, they did have him on a stretcher. All right, they had him on a stretcher, and as soon as they brought him to the back, uh, from what we've heard, they brought out, I think it's a defibrillator, and basically they put it on someone's chest, and they shocked the person. Um, and they try to bring him back to life. And yeah, in addition, that jumps their heart. Yeah. In addition to the defibrillator, they were also performing CPR. And as talent started to gather around, WWE officials tried to clear everyone away. Uh, and people had no idea. It was just chaos backstage with you know everybody just worried yeah. about you know what was happening. Apparently, as- the wrestlers were kind of finding out the uh, updates. From watching the show, like the uh, the Michael Cole update, that's how they were learning what was going on because they weren't really being told anything back there. 
Right. Nobody had any idea uh, what was going on. And they tried to clear as they were taking him to the ambulance and as they had him on a stretcher, they were doing the CPR and the defibrillator trying to shock him back to life. And uh, they tried to clear everybody away from the scene as to not get these guys worried about, you know, is is this guy dead? Is, is he alive? I mean, what is, what is going on right now? So they tried to clear the uh, scene. They eventually took him to... A hospital and I'm gonna give you some breaking news right now that we're gonna put up on the website that we haven't put up I'm gonna break it to you right here on WZR radio uh, just last week uh, a close friend of Jerry Lawler's that had contacted us um, Jerry had complained of chest pains as of last week and that's not on any of the websites right now we're gonna put that up after we go off the air but that could have been a sign I mean they said that you know he was fine over the weekend at indie events and he worked a segment it was uh roddy piper an indie worker and him and they had piper and lawler in the ring trying to get the indie worker over we put a video up of that on the website today and he seemed fine at indie events over the weekend and wasn't complaining about anything but did tell friends last week that he had some chest pains so yeah and speaking from personal experience my stepdad has died of a heart attack he i think it was two days before he actually had the heart attack and died he was complaining of chest pain too, and then they didn't really, they went away, and you know, he was okay, but you could tell something was wrong with him, and then yeah, the day that he died, it just, it hit him out of nowhere, and he just, he just went down, like, went down like a sack of potatoes and died, so that, that is known to happen, and the other thing with Waller is that, that really makes it tragic, is he's one of very few guys, maybe the only guy, it's very well documented, he never had a sip of alcohol in his life, he's never smoked a cigarette, he's never done any drugs, he's a very clean living guy, that's why he can be 62 years old and look you know, <laughs> the way he does, and the, Bret Hart, um, look at him, you know what I mean, and the, Bret Hart's not like a fucking junkie or anything either, but you know, he's, he's dabbled here and there, but Waller's had a clean, clean life his whole life, and I would say a lot of it, you got to attribute to him, he should not be wrestling at that age. Uh, at that level, I, I just think it's it's it's, it's not it's not necessary. Well, first the of all. the person that had contacted us, Joe Cooper, um, said that mm -hmm. you know Lawler had complained of chest pains as of last week and dismissed those claims as indigestion. Um, and basically, what we know from Joe is Lawler's family. Uh, there's going to be a gathering on Thursday. It's going to be this Thursday at the Raleigh, North Carolina Springs Mall, uh, or not North Carolina, Raleigh Springs Mall in Memphis, Tennessee. It's going to be held at 7 o'clock, yeah. 7 o'clock Eastern Time this Thursday, where there's going to be a prayer vigil um, that is going to be held for Jerry Lawler. And that's what we know from there. Now, you just said that, you know, Lawler should not be wrestling at the age of 61 or 62. 62. Uh, yeah. Rick Flair appeared on CNN Headline News. Uh, they've got a program called Evening Express. And they were talking about Jerry Lawler. That's the reason they had him on, because they were discussing what happened last night. And they asked him, yeah. um, you know, about a guy that was still working at 61, 62 years old. And Flair noted that he had great medical advances and had been able to protect in-ring talent and pointed that, you know, the company had medical care at ringside and backstage that probably saved Lawler's life and then said, nobody made Jerry get in the ring. And this is a quote from Flair. Nobody made Jerry get in the ring. He got in the ring because he's a great pro. So Flair came out and defended Lawler wrestling at 61 or 62 years old. So, and we're going to put that up yeah, on the website. Still, I mean, Terry Funk still wrestles, Dusty Rhodes. I mean, these guys still, you don't really know about it that often, but he, they, they wrestle indie shows all the time. I mean, it's, that, it's the same as boxers that can't, they don't know, like Ali, they don't know when to quit. They, they just can't right. step out of the spot. Like, they can't stop performing in front of crowds. And Lawler has, you know, a great passion for wrestling, as everybody knows. And uh, with the Ric Flair thing, I remember he did a fake heart attack angle in WCW. But I would say with the Lawler thing, it's probably the second most tragic thing to ever happen on a live wrestling event ever. I mean, Owen Hart right. being the first. You know what? Just being, you know, you just know what, surreal. You know what really gets to me, though, man, is... These, these people come out, man, and, and they put on the comments section. I mean, dude, I saw some of the rudest things you would ever read on a website with these people, you know. I mean, listen. Give me an example. What do you mean? 
there were just comments last night. You know, people. I mean, you're always going to get this is a work. Doing it to work or this, like, well, like asshole, no, like, fuck ass, Lawler, I hope he's dead. Fuck <laughs> Lawler, hope he's dead. I mean, New Jack wow. came out. New Jack is an example. Um, last night, hold on one second here, dude. Yeah, Michael Moody was telling me about this, but I didn't hear it or read it yet. What did New Jack say? I heard he said some fucked up shit about the Lawler thing. Last night, last Dude, night, um, Jerry Lawler, or last night, New Jack came out, and he said, Hell to the king. Oops, I mean, hell. Laugh out loud. Fuck him. Wow. That's just fucking cold, man. You, that's... I mean, he's just, he's looking to get a tape. He knows. Oh, I'll say some fucked up shit. It'll be a controversial thing, and it'll get my name in the headline. Some people really think like that, wrestlers especially. No, they they say something they know that'll get their name mentioned a lot, and they oh shit, now my juice is you know flying. <laughs> well, and and not only that too, but you're you're always gonna have the people. I mean, because WWE does all these storyline angles now, dude, where they try to work the internet. So you've got all these commenters saying everything's a work, man. I mean, every little thing, anything that comes out, man. I mean, if somebody dies, or somebody has a heart attack, this, that, and the other, everybody, oh my god, it's a work, it's a work, it's a work. No, dude, you can tell if you you guys have been a lot of you guys have been watching wrestling for long enough to know what's real and what's not real what's scripted what's not scripted man and something like that well, I mean, can not... you blame wrestling fans because like like I said they did the fake heart attack with Ric Flair in WCW I remember Shawn Michaels when he got beat up in Syracuse right, by right. the Marines at that bar he started doing an angle where he would collapse and pass out in the middle of the ring and they'd bring oxygen out and like the, the announcers would do the serious thing they fucked with the fans so much that it is hard to tell when shit's real and when shit isn't but like you said it was obvious last night something was wrong. When you you've got when, when you've got it. when you've got Michael Cole out there, you know, on crying. on crying on uh, on commentary. I mean, let me let me just play some bits and pieces of uh, of you know what what Michael Cole said. You have uh, the first one because I haven't heard that one. Yet. I do, I do. I'll uh, so I, I mean just listen to uh, to Michael Cole's voice here, and you got. I mean, you can you, you just. I, I'm, I'm sure you noticed that. Uh... Jerry Lawler hasn't been uh, active in the, the, the past couple of uh, matches. Uh, a, a little bit earlier tonight, Jerry uh, passed uh, out here at uh, passed out here at ringside. Um, Jerry uh, Jerry collapsed and was uh, was uh, was helped to the back. Uh, he was stretchered to the back to the locker room area, and we understand now that uh, the Jerry is receiving medical attention as we speak. Uh, they are performing CPR, um, and again, uh, this is not, it is not part of tonight's entertainment. Um, uh, this has happened, uh, and again, Jerry Lawler collapsing at ringside tonight, and um, uh, they're performing CPR as we speak back in the, in the locker room area. We'll, we'll have more information as Monday Night Raw rolls on tonight. Now that was now, the that, that, that I got that sick feeling in my stomach hearing that again. I didn't hear that first one. That that just shook me up, man. That was that's a real right. Thing. And and Vince McMahon, word for word, what Michael Cole said, right? That, that's why you heard Michael Cole. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, Vince McMahon was was Wait, that was true, yeah. yeah. And then we'll go to uh, the second um, the second cut in that Michael Cole did is uh, anyway, right here. ladies and gentlemen. I do want to to uh, preface this by saying that this is not part of our entertainment tonight. This is a, a real-life situation. Um, earlier this evening, my broadcast colleague, Jerry the King Lawler, uh, uh, passed out while working here at ringside. Uh, he collapsed um, uh, on the ground. He was stretchered to the back where he received CPR. Um, the latest update we have now is he has been, uh, he has been taken to a, to a local hospital uh, here in Montreal. Uh, we are being told... Um, uh, that he is receiving oxygen, but Jerry uh, is uh, is breathing on his own. Um, although this is a, is an extremely extremely serious situation, and uh, you know, Jerry, my friend, m my, my prayers are with you. And um, out of respect to Jerry tonight, um, there's going to be no further commentary on this broadcast. And um, but we hope to provide you with some sort of update before uh, before we leave the uh, the air tonight. I got goosebumps, bro. I'm watching. Yeah, man, that's I'm, crazy. I'm you got to give Michael Cole a lot of respect, too. For let me, the let me say this. Because I heard it was his own decision not to do any commentary anymore. He was just like, I can't do it, man. You, you guys, know, anybody, in the, uh, anybody in the chat room know who Sean Colehart is? 
Everybody know who Sean Colhart is? No. Let me ask the people in the chat room. Sean Colhart? Let me ask you guys. You know who that is? Let me tell you who that is. Sean Colhart. Okay. Sean Colhart is Michael Cole. All right? And that dude, people look at Michael Cole, and everybody knows Michael Cole, Michael Cole. That's not Michael Cole's real name. Sean Colhart is. And that guy deserves the utmost respect for going out there last night and, and doing what he did to be able to maintain his composure last night during yeah, I mean I got I got goosebumps man I mean you can say whatever you want about Michael Cole all right but the guy plays a character on TV he plays a heel character on television a lot of the lines that you hear from Michael Cole they're being fed to him by Vince McMahon it's a gimmick and people fail to they they get so caught up in the moment of Michael Cole sucks and Michael Cole this and Michael Cole that. Well, a lot of it. I mean, there's two things. There's the man the fact that he is he's the guy that replaced Jim Ross. And no matter who it was, people weren't going to want to like him because they replaced the guy we all love, Jim Ross. And then the second thing, like you said, is he's playing a heel announcer. So I just that means he's doing a good job as a heel for people to hate him. You can so you can say he is a good guy. You can you, tell that. You night. you can say what you want about Michael Cole, but Sean Colehard. That's a, a completely different story, and a lot of people class forget act. that. A, a class act, man. I, I, that's very hard to do when you've got your best friend out there, a guy that you work with on a weekly basis, man. Uh, it'd be like me and you, man. You know what I mean? If something ever happened to you, I couldn't come on here and ma maintain my composure as it was happening. You know, I, I wouldn't no, know what that. That would be impossible. I couldn't even imagine. The way you put it in perspective like that, just imagine. Like, we're in the middle of doing it. Let's say right now, I just collapse. And like you knew it, and you're like, let's say you're on a real radio station, not internet radio, to where you have advertisers and sponsors like the WWE does, and you have to continue, and you have to fucking do your job, knowing what's going on. How could you possibly keep your shit together enough to even speak? You know what I mean? Right. And 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 listen, here's the uh, the final update from uh, from. We'll do Sean Colehart here, and and not Michael Cole. You know, out of I, I mean, it's. Uh, this is tough. Yeah, this is John, not Mike. This is this is tough for him to do. So here's the uh, the final segment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on Monday Night Raw again. Uh, I want to preface this by saying this is not part of tonight's entertainment. This is a a, a real life situation. Uh, my my broadcast colleague Jerry the King Lawler earlier on tonight uh, collapsed uh, in a mid match uh, while on commentary. Um, he was uh, he fell out of his chair to the floor below. Uh, doctors were here immediately. Uh, emergency personnel would stretcher him out of the arena to the back where he received CPR. Uh, we were told uh, when he left the building to go to a medical center, he was breathing on his own, but he was, of course, receiving oxygen. And we now have an update that, well, we pray to God, is, is a bit more encouraging. Uh, but we're being told uh, that, that Jerry is, is more responsive um, as we speak. Uh, that he is, uh, he's reacting to lights. Uh, you know how the doctors use the lights to, to your eyes. He's reacting to the lights in his eyes. Um, he is in isolated ER, the isolated portion of the emergency room right now as we speak, um, and he is uh, he is awaiting a CAT scan. Um, uh, and we are told that uh, in typical Jerry Lawler fashion, he is fighting hard. And again, King, pull through this. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, and wow. uh, we hope to have some sort of update before we leave the air uh, tonight on Raw. Come on, King, get through this. All right, and then the final, the yeah. final one. This is the uh, this this is how they ended Monday Night Raw last night, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we leave you tonight on Monday Night Raw with what we hope, what we <coughs> believe is encouraging news tonight concerning Jerry the King Lawler. We are being told that Jerry Lawler's condition has stabilized, uh, that Jerry Lawler is breathing on his own and his heart is beating on his own. To reset what has happened tonight, uh, about an hour ago on Monday Night Raw, Jerry Lawler collapsed here at ringside. Um, he fell from the announce table to the floor. Immediately, our doctors at ringside were administering aid to Jerry Lawler. Medical uh, personnel came out. They stretchered Jerry to the locker room area. Jerry then received CPR. He was stretchered to a waiting ambulance and taken to a nearby medical facility. And again, we can tell you this, Jerry Lawler's condition, according to the hospital, has stabilized. He is breathing on his own. His heart is beating on his own. He is now being prepared for a CAT scan of his chest and his head. And, and again, ladies and gentlemen, please, your thoughts and prayers 
for Jerry the King Lawler tonight. And we encourage you to visit WWE.com and all uh, parts of social media for updates throughout the night and throughout the week on Jerry the King Lawler. And on a personal note, Jerry beat this thing. Get him, King. Good night, everybody. Bam. From Montreal. All right, and that's how that's how they ended it. And and let's just say this: that they've got all right. The current status of of Jerry Lawler is he is hospitalized. He's got his uh, current girlfriend, twenty twenty or twenty two year old girlfriend. She is in the hospital. Uh, Brian Christopher is uh, his real life son, uh, Grandmaster Sexe is uh, in the hospital with him. They are at his bedside. Um, they do have him hooked up right now to a ventilator. Um, they put some stents in uh, in his heart last night and basically it opens it up so that ox oxygen can flow more freely uh, through his heart. And the reason they are keeping him on a ventilator right now, you don't want to, I mean, when somebody suffers a massive stroke or a heart attack such as that, um, you don't want to just take him off. You want to ease it out, man. So they're easing him off the ventilator. Hopefully they ha they hope to have the ventilator off or him off the ventilator by later tonight. He is not able to talk right now due to the ventilator. Um, and then once they do remove the ventilator, we will know a lot more details, whether he can speak, whether he does have slurred speech, um, whether he does have brain damage, and they're going to be be performing more tests and Stacy Carter says tomorrow morning we are gonna have much more details on uh, what the future holds I mean as far as an in-ring career it does look like Jerry Lawler is is gonna be done uh, probably won't be wrestling I mean I would say 99% won't be back in the ring um, as you far definitely as shouldn't that's for sure as far as uh, commentating goes it really all depends on brain damage uh, you got to understand the guy was without oxygen for or, you know a minute or two last night is what you know people are saying and that can really really mess up someone's you know someone's brain so I think tomorrow and later this week we're gonna have a lot more details on um, you know whether he did suffer brain damage uh, whether he's gonna be able to return to the commentating booth I'm sure they're gonna keep him off TV for at least the next couple of weeks uh, if he's ever able to return um, it's just I mean and he's not out of the woods yet man like we talked about earlier there are times where somebody suffers a stroke or a heart attack man and you know you suffer that one and then they they you know you, you suffer another one and another one man so he's not out of the woods yet but there are good signs his vital signs seem to be okay um, and, and we'll just kind of, you know, have to wait and see. It's kind of a waiting game right now. Nobody knows how severe uh, it's going to be until they remove him from the ventilator and, and see what the deal is. So that's what we know so well, far. Good, man. I guess the, uh, the other main thing we should talk about as far as the show itself, you have the poll results yet. Should Raw have continued? I mean, you heard Michael Cole's voice. It was obviously, I mean, they knew it was serious. Uh, anybody in the arena or, or backstage especially knew that, I mean, this was tragic. It could have gone the lines of Owen Hart. It could have been a death on live uh, during a live show. Thank God it wasn't. But um, well, what do you think? Your own opinion, and then what are the poll results? Should Raw have ended the moment that that has happened? I always think um, what I would want, what Jerry would want, uh, I put myself in the mind of, of someone else. Yeah. And almost always, they always say, I would not want the show to have been stopped for me. I would want the show to go on. Uh, I would want these guys to go out there and do their job. So in my opinion, should Raw have continued uh, following the Jerry Lawler incident? I'm going to say yes. It should have continued as it did last night. Okay, and before you do the poll results, my own opinion, I don't know if I can even give a yes or no, because I, I think a little differently than you. I think if I'm a performer, say I'm CM Punk, say I'm John Cena, or any of the guys that had to wrestle, how can you expect these guys? To, I mean, like WWE, like, it's a, like the like us in the army. WWE, that's a fraternity. They're a family. You know what I mean? They're around each other so much for so many years, every day on the road. That you know, all this. Could you literally go out there and do a 20-minute interview 
in character performance but, or knowing what's going on. I mean, that's a lot to ask but, somebody. You know what I mean? and, H train, H you do it? I don't know. A train zero zero one in the chat room says, and this is what I agree with. Lawler would have wanted it that way, and I understand it's a difficult thing to do. And if you can't do it, then you can't go out there and you can't do it. But for that time, and I know it's it's tragic and it had just happened, but you got to put yourself in the mindset that Jerry would want me to go out there and do this. He would want me to do this, and I've got to do it. I agree with you with that, I've but I'm saying if you're it. one of the performers that has to go out and perform, could you even do it? I mean, obviously they did, but it's it's really a lot to ask of somebody. It is. No, you're right. And as far as, um, you know, we put a poll up on uh, WZRonline.com. We asked you guys, should Raw have continued following the Jerry Lawler incident? With 56% of the votes, they say yes, it should have continued, and 44% of the votes say no, it should not See, have continued. It's so, really, a, that's what I say, it's a controversial topic. That's damn near split down the middle, yes and no. And right. Like I said, I couldn't even get any yes or no answer. I, I, I just think if I'm one of the performers, could I go out and, and, and do my job knowing what's going on? I guess if you're a professional, especially like you said, knowing Jerry, he would want the show to go on, but... Could I even do it? You know, could I keep myself together? Like you said, if something happened to me or if it was me and something happened to you, could we do this show? I mean, obviously, if we did, it wouldn't be of the same quality. But, I mean, could we do it? I don't know. It's don't hard know. to say, man. I probably, I, I, I probably couldn't. I probably couldn't do it if, uh, if something happened to you live on air. You know what I mean? I probably couldn't. I would probably yeah. end the show and then take a week or two off and then come back when I was uh, calmed down. And I'm sure when I came back a week or two later... Uh, I'd be a mess, man. I'd be fine going into the show, but uh, once I got talking about it, I'm sure I would probably break down. And It'd I, be hard, you man. know. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a fucking, <laughs> it's a controversial issue. Like, should the show go on? Now, what, um, now, now, listen. I, I want to open it up because I know you guys got a lot of questions on uh, on Jerry yeah. Lawler as well. So let's open up the phone lines right now. It's going to be five one eight seven one two. 3070. We've only got one phone line open, so if you call up and it rings and rings and rings and we don't pick up, keep calling back. We'll try to get in each and every single one of you guys tonight. Um, but call up 518-712-3070. Whatever's on your mind. Um, you wanna, I know we haven't talked about Goldberg either. Uh, Goldberg possibly signing with WWE. He's came out on Twitter this evening and denied those rumors. But um, well, that's what yeah, he would do. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course he's going to deny. So we'll get into phone calls right now. Like I said, one phone line open, guys. 518-712-3070. Caller, you're no, live on you WWE. ZR Radio, what's going on? Yeah, I just want to make a comment on the on the Lawler thing. I'm in the chat room tonight, and uh, you know the whole thing with me. I mean, I was sitting here watching like everybody else, and uh, that show should have ended. I mean, you could tell that was all legit. You know, shit. I mean, Cole was breaking down. You never see Cole break down. So, I mean, you know, for Cena and Punk and Brett, and well, not so much Brett, but for Cena and Punk to go out there and do that. That took a set. I'll give it that much. And that's just my comment on the deal. All right. Thanks for the call, bud. All right. And Appreciate it. Two more things. Uh, two more things. One, I guess one more thing. SmackDown tonight, the announcing situation with that. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think should happen? Because if it's Michael Cole or whoever it is, by the time, let's say they go on tonight and they give the update, you know, it's positive news, as positive as it can be. Let's say something happens between, like you said, he's not out of the woods yet. Let's say they tape the show. Let me say this. They, they tape the show tonight. And they give the updates, he's in stable condition, this and that, everything's, you know, looking good, as good as it can. Let's say, God forbid, he dies before Friday, and then they got to air that fucking show. You know what I mean? You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, what do you think they should do with the announcing tonight, and, and how, how should they handle it? We've, uh, we've got SmackDown spoilers. I don't believe we know uh, who the announcers are, but I, I, I believe, uh, actually, I, I, I can um, give me one sec. I believe Michael Cole uh, is there tonight um yeah i believe he uh yeah michael cole is uh is calling the event so we have that we know that hey, much captain howdy in the chat calm down he said dude don't say that shit don't even talk about jerry Dang. i said god forbid i'm just seriously i'm looking at it from the perspective of what 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 the hell would they do you know i'm just saying it's a business they gotta do something what would they do you know i'm just questioning you know what they would do if that situation did happen god forbid you know hope God, hopefully it doesn't, but I'm just saying, if it does, what? how do they handle that? You know what I mean? If it's a legitimate question. Caller, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Hey, not too much. Uh, my name is Jay, calling from Toronto, Canada, actually. 
Canada, uh, no doubt. A little bit of the uh, reports from Montreal last night uh, from there, you know, seeing the tweets and uh, had a buddy who, who was at the bar actually saw the ambulance pass by, funny enough. But, um, you know, what I want to say is that, you know, the sad situation over there, you know, best wishes go out to him and, and his crew. I mean, hopefully we see him back. But I have to agree, his wrestling career, I think that's, that's pretty much over with commentating. You know, traveling and all that stuff does take, does take its toll after a while, you know. So I have to say that he should be on TV for quite a while. Right. Well, well, you know what? And and as far as um, I'm sure he will be. You know, yeah. I mean, he traveled. Um, he worked events in Aruba over the weekend, and then traveled right into uh, Montreal. So, I mean, it was a long travel day for him. And then, like I said, we're going to put an article up on the website as soon as we go off the air here tonight that Waller had experienced uh, chest pains as early as last week. So, I mean, there were some signs uh, in advance. So we just, I mean, honestly, I, I think his wrestling career is going to be over. Keep in mind that Jerry yeah. Waller, he only travels to Raw on Monday, but he does work weekend live events and indie events and things like that. So he does travel more than a guy like Michael Cole, who travels on Monday and Tuesday to Raw and SmackDown uh, and then goes home for the remainder of the week, doesn't work house yeah. shows or anything like that. You know? And also what I wanted to say, uh, I know we have a lot of Canadian listeners, a huge Canadian contingent. If anybody was in Montreal last night and was at the show, please call in and uh, and tell us your uh, perspective being there a lot, like what, what, what the scenario, what everything looks like, you know? Right. We've got uh, a couple open phone lines right now. Like I said, guys, we've only got one open phone line. So if nobody's on the line with us, uh, that would be the best time to call. It's going to be 518-712-3070. Five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero. Read that comment from uh, Dino UK in the chat real quick. Tonight the SmackDown type of Michael Cole, who is usually heav- heavily booed, came to the ring to a thunderous applause and standing ovation. That's good, man. That's awesome. Good for him. Good for him. So I guess he did do commentary tonight. So that's right. that's the answer to that question. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> Caller, you're live yeah. on WZR Radio. What's up? Hi, this is uh, Captain Howdy313 from the chat. First time calling in. Um, look, man, I'm just trying to change the pace a little bit. I know everybody's talking about Jerry Lawler and everything in WWE. It's a little depressing and, and stuff. Um, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, let's talk a little TNA real quick. What about the whole Bound for Glory series and Jeff Hardy, man? Um, I, I personally think Joe should have won that. I think TNA is doing terrible, terrible stuff right now. And the Bound for Glory series, I think they just completely ruined it. Well, I mean, did you just tune in? We did run down that whole pay per view. We, we we talked about the Bound for Glory series and the Hardy thing and everything like that earlier. Yeah, I mean, Hardy's going to go on to face Austin Aries at the uh, Bound for Glory pay per view. We did do a uh, no surrender rundown, but um, I mean, Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries on paper looks like a uh, decent match. I mean, I, I like Austin Aries as uh, as world champion. It's it's fresh. It's new, you know what I mean? I, like I said, I think the Aces and Eights, uh, the whole storyline with the TNA locker room, you know, they're brawling every week. Well, like I said, that's going to culminate at the uh, at the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. Yeah. So they're going to hype it in up my, for a couple more weeks. In my opinion, um, Austin Aries was always known as a good worker. Uh, you know, great, great matches. Great worker, has yeah. A potential, has, yeah, has the potential to be a bigger name. You know, I say, like you said, it's fresh. Giving him the title really helped his career, and now you look at him like a main event guy. Same as Bobby Roode. Everybody knew he had potential, but when they finally gave him that run with the title, but now you look at Bobby Roode as a main event. I think it's the same with Austin Aries. Caller, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Turn those speakers down, man. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have a question. Do you know exactly what they have planned for the Pat Patterson appreciation night? Thank you. I do not. I know uh, they aired video what packages... There was, uh, after Raw last night, there was supposed to be a Pat Patterson appreciation yeah. night, um, and obviously they scrapped that. Basically, I got a text message, yeah. uh, like I told you guys earlier, I got a text message at about 10.55 Eastern Time that said, hey man, they're, they're rounding everybody up and they're going to hold a backstage meeting. And uh, then I got a text message about 11.45 last night when everybody went home, and uh, they basically brought everybody into the room, said Jerry's going to be okay, uh, things are looking up, and uh, not to worry and um, they would follow right. up. They would send out a mass text to everybody or an email and uh, just basically try to calm everybody down. But Pat Patterson night, they aired video packages throughout the show. He was backstage yeah, at the good. show. They were going to bring him out after it went off the air, and they were probably going to bring out a bunch of his past opponents. And uh, 
you know, things like that. Triple H would probably come out and, uh, you know, you would have a uh, kind of a celebration type thing that they've done for Yeah, of his Sean. career, especially in Montreal where he's from and everything. But um, like you said, I heard that they had aired throughout the night. I think it was three different times they had aired clips of uh, kind of like the Hall of Fame stuff where they have guys talking about the guy's career throughout the show. And then it culminated with the only thing that the live crowd was told about the whole Waller thing in general that I was told was that, yeah, they were canceling the pet. Pat Patterson Appreciation Night because of what had happened. They didn't really give any other information to the live audience about the all this thing other than that. Right. Ju- Justin, Justin Roberts came on the uh, microphone uh, right before the main event segment and uh, said that they were, you know, the, they would do the Pat Patterson Appreciation Night at a uh, at a different time or at another date. Yeah. Caller, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, even though the show went on, I believe it should have because you know, even though people's thoughts were on Lawler and not as much as the entertainment, they were still able to get updates. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world that don't follow, you know, WZR online, so they wouldn't be able to follow what was going on with Lawler. But the fact that it went on, they were get, able to get updates with Michael Cole. That's so all point. those that say, all those that say that, you know, it shouldn't have gone on, they'd be thinking right now, well, you know, what's going on unless they follow next Monday or Friday or, you know, anything like that. So I think it should have gone on. You said- That's a great point, too, the fact that they were able to give updates to the fans who were concerned. Uh, I got a good one here from Horseman in the chat room. He's got his own personal rapid fire for me. He says, will this limit WWE using wrestling legends in the ring, in your opinion? Remember, they used Ricky Steamboat in the ring, and he had a brain aneurysm a couple of days later. Now, Jerry Lawler. That would be nice to know that people would blame them for uh, you know using them in the ring at their age and their condition. What do you think? Do you think that um, this will limit the f- them using older uh, legends, as we'll call them, in the ring? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I, I, you know, I mean, Jerry. I mean, everybody's got health issues that are unknown. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it can happen to anyone. You know what I mean? It, it, I mean, it was just. It was a shocker, man. You know what I mean. This this can happen to anybody, man. Um, but I don't. I don't think they're gonna. No, no. I. I, I, that, that, I got conflicting thoughts on that. I would say it'd be a case by case basis. Like you know, this guy's got health problems. Well, we're not gonna have him wrestle with him. But right. Ricky yeah. Steamboat yeah. And Jerry Lawler. Ricky Steamboat and Jerry Lawler are two of the healthiest guys, especially for being older guys. You know, so. If there, there's really no way to know. I mean, they would have to never let anybody over a certain age. They have to set like an age limit. Like if you're this old, you can't wrestle. Otherwise, how would they know? There's no way of knowing, you know, if this guy wrestles, it's bad for his health because those two guys are in great, great health, and, and it still happened anyway. You, know, <laughs> you, you can't really know. Right, right. Kelly, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Yeah, uh, quick question. You know, with um, Lawler doing his indie thing and announcing, kind of like. Um, you know, Larry Merchant, he's like 122 years old, and he does uh, HBO <laughs> boxing, you know, comment announcing, but he doesn't work every week, only big time matches. With uh, Lawler doing uh, the Andy scene and working three hour Raw, do you think it's too so much work on him that that kind of helped lead to a heart attack because he's so old doing so much work, you think, at his age, or what? Well, he's not so old. I mean, he's 62. Come on, 62 is not old, old, old. You know? He's wrestling, though. You know. Right, to be wrestling, yeah. I mean, listen, travel uh, over the years, he's been in the business for, what, 40 years or something like that, man? I mean, he's he's been around for a long time. Of course, that's going to take a toll on your body, you know? I mean... Yeah, and a lot of it, too, is stress, blood pressure, heart rate, things like that. Traveling doesn't affect that so much, but wrestling does. That's where that's where I really like Horseman's question from the chat. Like, when do guys have to say, hey, listen, we can't let these guys wrestle anymore? You know, it's right. just not smart, you know? Uh-huh. Gola, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Hey, what's up, Brian? What's up, Matt? How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Hey, um, yeah, I just got two quick questions. Yeah, my first thought on the Jerry Lawler thing was, um, you know, just thank God it didn't happen, like, when he was having his match. Like, God forbid, you know, he just yeah. happens, it happens, like, right during the match. Like, it, it, that's what I was thinking of, is, like, what if it would have went, like, a little bit longer, and it, it wasn't when he was at the booth, and it was during the, you know, it was just, like, you know, it, it, I, obviously it's the same thing, but it would have been much worse if it happened during the match. Right, right, that's, yeah. That's a great point. Like, even if they were, even if it happened at the commentary booth, let's say it was Cole and uh, Lawler running down the pay-per-view or something. Like, if, like, my point is, what if it was on camera in any capacity? That would have been, I mean, uh, just a, I mean, no matter what, it was bad, but that would have worked to actually 
see it and have that image in your brain that that's something that scars, especially children. I mean, that'll scar them for life, seeing that kind of thing. Right, yeah, absolutely. Caller, you're live on WZR Radio. What's going on? Hey, guys. Uh, caller from Montreal. Montreal, were you at uh, Raw last night? No, I know several people who were at Raw. I know a couple of people who were sitting almost right in back of the uh, incident. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, one person uh, who was sitting maybe, I'd say, three rows in back said that Jerry Lawler's face was uh, to the point where it was purple. And uh, several people came to his aid, and they basically carried him off. Um, prior to that, the crowd was really into it, really loud. But after the incident, everybody uh, basically... Uh, <laughs> didn't they didn't do much like the the volume closed basically well you could tell that on on air too man uh you know i i mean that's where i first said i went on facebook and i said hey man i said everybody's nobody's paying attention to the match everybody's looking over at the commentating booth and then it went silent for the remainder of the night right. i mean there were a couple pops right. here and there but it went i mean the crowd went dead you know so, yeah i mean uh, they were doing the dairy chance which is a supportive thing but even they they, they got into the Cena Punk thing. I don't know if you played the whole segment, but they were doing like you can't wrestle chance to Cena and, and popping for a lot of the stuff. And right. so they got back into it, but you could tell that, yeah, you know, from what I heard, the, the, the momentum from the crowd definitely it, it died down after the law that thing, for sure. The, the thing was, you guys you guys didn't hear it on, in, on television, but according to the people that I know who went to the show, the Jerry chants were really loud. The, the fans yeah. were really supportive and, uh, you know, basically, the in the beginning, people didn't know what was going on, but then after, they realized what, was, what actually ended up happening, and uh, throughout the whole night, the Jerry chants were really loud, but you didn't hear it on television the right. way you were supposed to, you know? Right. I, I'm assuming WWE ended up lowering uh, the volume uh, right. for respect, maybe, to Jerry Lawler uh, right. in regards to the crowd. Right. All right. Thanks for the call, bud. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, caller, you're live on WZR Radio. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Sorry, I just had a one more question. I just called a little while ago. Okay. Hey, um, uh, it's a it's a TNA thing. Um, I know you watch it a lot, Ryan, and I don't know if you ever noticed it, but it annoys me because they go from um eight until ten, and any time they seem to have like a big angle, especially with the aces and eights. They'll bring him out at like 9.55, and then by like 9.56 or 9.57, they're in the ring, and just as they start to fight and people are going to come out, they go off, and it never stays over like Raw does. And yeah. it just annoys me because it, as soon as it gets good, we're like, okay, now here comes, the, it, 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 it goes off, and it happens like every time. Like, can't they do it where they can bring him out where at least it gives it... Right. I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah, it's a network issue. I mean, Spike TV doesn't allow an overrun for uh, for TNA Impact Man. So you, uh, I mean, basically, it, it, TNA. What TNA could do is they could start the anger earlier. They could start it at you know uh, nine fifty Eastern Time instead of nine fifty seven Eastern Time. I mean, it's uh, T Spike TV doesn't give them an, uh, g doesn't give them an overrun. And in addition to that, you know, TNA would need to start earlier. All right, let's get some rapid fire questions out of the way. We're gonna do these real quick guys and then we're going to give you Smackdown spoilers, Smackdown superstars and Saturday Morning Slam Nielsa Hernandez, do you think Vince will have JR do commentary with Cole while the King is recovering? Very possible. Yeah, I don't know. It'll either be him or Josh Matthews or Brooke, yeah, somebody. Everett Austin do you truly think Jerry Lawler will return to the booth? If not, who do you think will take his place? Uh, he's not going to return. Funny. He's not going to return anytime soon. Uh, they're gonna, at least going to give him a month or two off. No doubt about that. Yeah, and then if, if he returns at all, it depends on his condition uh, when he, you know, when he recovers. If he does, you know. Daniel Perry Jackson, K, K. Danny Young, don't you think Samoa Joe would have been a better choice to win the Bound for Glory series? Joe Aries and Bound for Glory would have been an amazing match. I think. Yeah, man, no doubt. Austin Aries, Samoa Joe on paper, sick. Coming from an ROH yeah. fan. Oh, man. Matthew Perez, if you were sitting next to Lawler when he had a heart attack, would you take out your camera? No, but I know, no. A, lot, no, but I know a lot of people do, and a lot of people probably did. You're probably going to see those. A lot those of people did. Yeah, there were videos and pictures uh, all over the Internet. TMZ had some immediately after it happened. Yep. Danny Young, do you think WWE is getting stale again? It's been stale for years, man. 
Matt, yes, yeah. Matt Batesel, uh I'm thinking that this is for Jen, Jerry's career. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think in-ring career, yes. Announcing career, it all depends on brain damage, man. All depends on brain damage. Eric, Eric Harper, Jerry Lawler sent similar shockwaves throughout the wrestling world, similar to the Owen and Harry Colas and the baseball and Philly community. Yeah, man. I mean, Boone compared it to Owen earlier. You know? Yeah, it it was exactly like the Owen Hart thing. I mean, thank God it didn't end the same way, but it felt the same way. It was it was eerie. It was it was um, it was surreal. Christopher Brown, just wondering if you noticed MB, MVP bashing fans on Twitter last night, two hours after Raw ended. I did not. Danny no. Young, uh, don't you think Oksana is severely fuckable? Oh man, she is so hot on Raw last night. Good, she she's right up there with AJ, no doubt. I haven't really seen her. I couldn't. I can't picture her in my head, so I don't know. Who is the hottest diva? I would say AJ or Kelly. Yeah, AJ or Kelly. Oksana's right up there, bro. Goddamn, Oksana's hot. He too, yeah. Yeah. Lorenzo Dozier, uh, what are your thoughts on the promo between CM Punk and John Cena? Yeah, we talked about that. I thought John Cena was great during that promo, but Boone thinks uh, CM Punk was good, too. Uh, Matt Hardy joining ROH. Uh, we'll see what happens, man. They're going to do a Matt Hardy versus Kevin Steen match, so Kevin we'll see what Steen, happens. Kevin Steen, yeah. Michael Repack, any update when they're going to bring Dean Ambrose in and how they're going to use him? No update, but he worked out weekend live events, so sooner than later, man. Sooner than later. Danny Young, Joe versus Ares would have been an instant classic, man. Agreed, man. Agreed. Owen Morgan, yep. favorite face and favorite heel from the Attitude Era. Favorite face, Steve Austin. Favorite heel, Rock. Ha, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> favorite face, Steve Austin. Favorite heel, Vince Man. Jordan the Champ, Paveo. Do you think Ryan Clark from the Steelers on your fantasy team? No, I don't. People always get me. Are you Ryan Clark from the Steelers? No, I'm not, man. Uh, and then they ask me if I'm Brian Clark, the guy that wrote the uh, autobiography. You know? Yeah. yeah. Deej Maximus, what do you think about the Brodus Clay Cameron situation? Do you think she'll be back? Well, they pulled her for all, from all upcoming signing and appearances, which is not good news for her. It's a 15-day suspension. Expires this Friday, but she's been pulled from all upcoming appearances over the next two months, so not good. Not there good. Go. Danny Young, wouldn't it be badass for Paul Heyman to start a stable, something NWO-ish? Get a few big stars to join CM Punk. Yeah, it'd be awesome, man. CM Punk will lead a faction. Uh, awesome. Stop with the NWO shit, everybody. I mean, goddamn, let it die. Ages and eight. But, uh, yeah, Heyman having a stable would be great. It would be awesome. Like the Dangerous Alliance, yeah, in WCW. He's, he's built for that kind of thing. Lance Winter, two weeks. Belfort versus Jones. Who you guys got? I'm pissed at Jones. I want Belfort, but I think Jones beats him. Uh, clearly, Jones is going to murk him. But, yeah, his, Belfort has a chance. I mean, he, can, he can always knock people out. He's got that power. But, yeah, Jones is going to eat his breakfast. John Lang, what you think was saying uh, into Jerry's headset when he put his head down? Ah, uh, Vince was probably. Are you are you no okay? Idea. Vince was probably saying, "Are you all right? What's what's the matter with you?" Vince at New Gym. What do you think? What do you guys think? Maybe the outcome of the WWE Divas title match against Caitlyn and Layla at Night of Champions. Who cares? It's the Divas. No, I think. I was gonna uh, say the correct answer is who gives a shit. Uh, probably Caitlyn. I think they're they're, they're high on Caitlyn. I think she gets a uh, push to the title. Jesse Young, thoughts on Nick Hogan's TMZ comments about Jerry Lawler. Haven't seen it yet. I'm guessing there's a new article up. So. I'll check it out I after that. Or hey Romero, as much as I want Vitor to KO the shit out of Jones, he will not. Jones will win. We agree with that. Um, yep. Oh, two two cancellations to announce too. Rampage, uh, Glover Texera uh, canceled, and Jose Aldo, Frank Yeager canceled. And uh, I think they were both on the same card too. So that's that's bad news for UFC. Hobert, Hobert Collins, thinking back to the ten 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 revealing of they, do you think Jeff Hardy could be the leader of Aces and Eights and turn it bound for glory? No, I think the leader is going to be somebody like Hogan, maybe even Hogan, uh, Bischoff or Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett. Somebody, Jeff Jarrett, yeah, yeah, somebody like that. Uh, Arturo Velasquez Jr. Sounds like a boxer. Uh, what do you think about Cody Cody Rhodes' gimmick and character so far? I like what they're doing with uh, Sin Cara trying to rip the mask off, but we've seen the paper, paper bag gimmick before, so it's kind of a rehash. Yeah. Uh, and Hobart mm -hmm. Collins again. If WrestleMania was on free TV, how many viewers do you think it could get? WrestleMania free TV? Uh, I don't know. I'd say another 500,000 maybe. 1.5 million. 500,000, that's it? I yeah, would say I think at so. least another million. You think so? A whole million? Yeah. I'd say one Maybe point. more. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's WrestleMania. Yeah, I know, you know, but I don't know. Depends uh, on what, what network, what the competition is. There's a lot of factors there, but it would definitely be a huge rating. One Between 1.5 and, and 2 million, no doubt. 
All right, here we go. I'm going to give you guys uh, WWE SmackDown Superstars and Saturday Morning Slam spoilers. Here we go for Saturday Morning Slam taped in Ontario, Canada tonight. Rey Mysterio defeated Michael McGillicuddy, so that's going to be your uh, your match coming up for this yeah. Saturday night. Mysterio on Saturday Morning Slam? Jesus yeah, Christ. well, it's a kid's show, man, so they need a guy with a mask on there, you know what that I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. For uh, WWE superstars, we have Natalia defeated Alicia Fox. And in the second match, uh, Cody Rhodes defeated Zack Ryder. Keep jobbing out Zack Ryder, man. Just job him out, right? Um, and then for WWE SmackDown, this is what's been taped so far. Alberto Del Rio, Rod Ricardo Rodriguez, and David Otunga come to the ring to open SmackDown. Ricardo and Otunga are, both have neck braces on. They're pissed off about Sheamus' deposition on Raw. Daniel Bryan comes out, and uh, Sheamus follows him out. Sheamus isn't buying it, and uh, lays Otunga out. Sin Cara defeated WWE IC champion The Miz in a non-title match. Bunch of botched moves from uh, Sin Cara, according to correspondence. Uh, Rey Mysterio and Cody Rhodes made an appearance in the match. They set up a fatal four-way at Night of Champions between Sin Cara, The Miz, Rey Mysterio, and Cody Rhodes. Kane defeated right. Kofi Kingston with a choke slam. Kane hugged Kofi before the match, so they're playing the hugging it out thing. Randy Orton comes out to a huge pop and defeats Tensai with an RKO. Sheamus against Daniel Bryan in a WrestleMania rematch is announced for later tonight. Caitlyn's pissed off backstage over Beth Phoenix. Or, uh, Caitlyn gets uh, an upset win over Beth Phoenix, and Layla was on commentary during this. And Sheamus defeated Daniel Bryan with a Texas Clo Cloverleaf now that his uh, bro kick is banned. So that's where we're left right. off with WWE SmackDown. We're going to have live spoilers, and I'm telling you guys, a ton of news is about to go up on the website. We have at least 10 or 15 posts that's going to be coming up on the website, guys. So stay tuned. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, it looks like Michael Cole is on commentary <laughs> tonight. So right. And thanks to anybody, all you new people that came out tonight. It was a big show tonight. Uh, hopefully it was a good one. I thought we were all right, man. It was a decent show. Right. It, was not, it was nothing special, but what are you going to do? It's kind of a somber well, show. You Nine... got to explain that normally our, our gig is we're entertaining, we try and be funny and entertaining. It's hard to do that when we're doing a you know 9-11 talk, Jerry Lawler talk. How entertaining can you really be? You know, you got to take it serious. Right, exactly, dude. We're going to do uh, submit feedback. Give us feedback, guys. If you're new, uh, I'm going to put up a post right now. Boone's going to plug it for you guys. Go over there. Don't be lazy, man. Put up some feedback. I read all these. Boone reads all these, too, man. Yeah. So get over there and, and give us some feedback, man. Yeah. Takes two seconds. And what we want you to do is go to Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Once you get there, top post will ask for your feedback on tonight's show. If you thought it was good, let us know. Let us know why. We'll do more of it. If you thought it was bad, let us know. Let us know why we'll do that. So this is how we get better. We try and adapt the show to your preferences, people. Feedback. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WCO. <laughs> the fucking and, pause, uh, dude. Alright, guys. We're, uh, and uh, if you're, if you're new, we're here every Tuesday night, guys. 8 to 10 Eastern time. If you like what we hear, come on back. We're here every Tuesday night. It's a good time here on WCR Radio. We're going to get out of here, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday night. We're going to have all the latest updates on Jerry Lawler. Uh, all the news. Like I said, we're going to have a ton of news coming up on the website right now on WZRonline.com for Matt Boone. This is Ryan Clark. Saying, see you next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, on WZROnline.com.